हेलो नहीं हो पा रहा है इतना थोड़ा ही ना टाइम लगता है या वेलकम 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 मैडम वेलकम टू इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन वेजिटेबल ऑयल्स वी आर इन हैदराबाद एंड इट वुड हैव बीन नाइस टू सी यू हियर इन हैदराबाद इन इंडिया एनीवे यूरोपियन वेदर इज नाउ चिली ऑफ कोर्स डली इज आल्सो चिली बट यू हैव लॉट ऑफ स्नो ओवर देयर आई होप रोथम स्टेट इज कंपेरेटिवली फाइन and uh, it's not that uh, you know uh, cold uh, weather over there <laughs> compared to other parts of the europe we have been watching the tv news and the devastation caused by you know heavy snowfall in uh, north america and many parts of the europe <laughs> so welcome uh, dr cook for uh, uh, being with us and sharing your views on developing ipm strategy for insect pest in european rape seed we have uh, our previous speaker dr x sharma who have uh, you know a tick research and uh, a renowned entomologist and former vice chancellor he spoke on the uh, new paradigm in insect pest management in oil seed brassica particularly he talked about aphids and uh, also the other way how to screen it how to utilize it how to Uh, have the resistant genotypes and so on so he, he has been mentioning so over to you dr cook and we will be glad to listen you i hope uh, our scientists are both offline and online because this covid has shown us the way to <laughs> connect online <laughs> you are sitting uh, quite apart but uh, still uh, you are visible and uh, it's a good good technique uh, all of us have learned so over to you and uh, we will like to listen you maybe 15 20 minutes thank, thank you. you well thank you very much um and thank you for inviting me i would have loved to have been with you in person um i was lucky enough to to visit hyderabad when i was a uh, just after my um undergraduate degree took some time out to travel around india i love um this country and um, i'm very sorry i can't be with you um today But I'd like to talk to you about um, my work on developing integrated pest management for all seed rape pests or, or canola pests. Can you see my screen? I'm just going to check that you can see. It is um, visible. Yep. Yeah. It is visible. Thank you. Yes, great. Okay, so I'm going to um, focus today on. Um, The, what what is now in Europe the biggest pest problem um, of, of of all seeds? It's the cabbage stem flea beetle, and the work I'm going to present to you um, is a collaborative effort between myself and a postdoc Patricia Ortega Ramos and Dr Rachel Wells, who works at the John Innes Centre, um, um, both in the UK. So as you well know, I don't really need to go over this, but what what is integrated pest management? Um, Well, it's um, an environmentally sensitive approach um, that relies on a combination of practices. So don't forget the I, the integrated bit <laughs> of pest management, um, including the judicious use of pesticides. And it uses information on the life cycles of pests and their interactions with the environment. Um, in the EU, the Sustainable Use of Pesticides Directive um, was brought out to achieve sustainable use of pesticides in the EU. It set out minimum rules to reduce the risk of pesticide use affecting human health and the environment, and it tried to promote the use of integrated pest management and alternatives to pesticides, but actually wasn't that successful in doing so, unfortunately. Um, as part of this, the UK government is required to show that growers are using IPM practices, but this is actually done in, in a in a a non-obligatory way, it's voluntary. So we have the voluntary initiative, IPM plan, and organizations such as LEAF, which is linking environment and farming, 
they produce a sustainable farming review. And we have lots of conservation grade membership kind of, of farmers. Um, IPM is now kind of represented um, in a triangle where at the bottom you've got cultural control methods, which include the enhancement of the environment to provide biological control and the use of resistant or um, lines um, to, to prevent pest attacks in the first place. Then you have risk assessment and the diagnosis and the use of decision support tools and thresholds. If those um, are exceeded, then you need to go to biotechnical methods, maybe traps um, or trap crops. And then at the top, only um, as a last resort, using synthetic um, chemicals. Most of the work that I'm going to produce um, today to you is, is at the bottom of this triangle on, on cultural control methods. So in Europe, we have a vast array of insect pests that attack all seed rape and throughout its growing phase. So a lot of insecticide is used um, in the crop. So therefore, it, it represents a really good model for how we can use integrated pest management to reduce um, insecticide use. So the cabbage stem flea beetle, it's not very prevalent in India. So I'm going to just talk about, a little bit about its life cycle. Um, you get two pests for the price of one. Both the adult and the larvae cause problems in the crop. The adult attacks the plant just at establishment. It, it feeds on the leaves, causing the shot hole type um, damage and can actually um, completely um, devastate the, the, the little plant as it's establishing. The larvae, um, uh, the eggs are laid in the soil and the larvae burrow into the plant. They feed on it from the inside out, reduce um, growing um, and increase susceptibility to damage and has high yield consequences. Both of these pests were adequately controlled by um, synthetic insecticides. We have the neonicotinoids, which were seed treated, which controlled the adult and the pyrethroid insecticides were used to control the larvae. However, um, in 2013, there was the EU ban on neonicotinoid um, insecticides. And this led to a lot of brown fields <laughs> across the UK. You can see this um, um, article from the Guardian newspaper in the UK. And these were two photos of two trials of my own um, at Rothamsted. And we had no plants at all as the beetles ate everything. This was mainly due to the fact that we didn't realize that the beetle had become resistant to the pyrethroid insecticides, which was the only other um, synthetic insecticide that was um, allowed for control. So basically farmers have absolutely nothing to control this beetle now. Um, and this has really led to a massive, massive decline in rapeseed um, production um, across Europe. You see here at the end, the 46% decline um, in, in all seed rape cropping due mainly to the, um, the regulation and removal of, of the available insecticides and pyrethroid resistance. Farmers can't control this pest, so they're not taking the risk to grow the crop. And this is resulting in the EU and the UK having to import um, a lot of our rapeseed um, oil. And now that the Ukraine is having problems, we're having to replace a lot of our rapeseed oil with palm oil, which of course is, is not often as sustainable. So what are our IPM options for, for controlling this pest? Um, well, the first use for farmers in the bottom right-hand corner of this IPM triangle, we have the use of resistant or tolerant cultivars. But um, as you know, that, that there are no resistant cultivars available for any insect pest um, of rapeseed. So we've been looking at the variation of feeding responses um, at Rothenstead to an array of, of, of brassica um, pests and um, brassica genomes in the Origin or Seed Rape Genetic Improvement Network project. We've trialled um, the diversity sets and we looked at the um, effects of feeding across these. And you can see at the top there, we had some lines that had very lot of feeding and other lines that had less feeding. So we took those into the lab. We did um, controlled bioassays. You can see from the graph at the bottom there, it's a bit um, messy, but you can see that some lines had very little feeding and other lines had a lot of feeding. So there is 
um, the potential for manipulation of, of genetics, oops, to prove, um, to provide um, resistant or tolerant lines. Rachel Wells at John Innes found similar results in her experiment. So we've actually been able to join together um, in a new project to try to develop um, resistance to cabbage stem flea beetle um, in oxid rape. Um, this project is, um, is now running and, and has three main objectives. The first is to explore the genetics behind the resistance that we've both found in our previous uh, feeding studies. The second is to try to explain the differences in adult palatability. So we're going to benchmark commercial varieties of orseed rape by comparing their performance in adult feeding trials against those that we found in our previous studies. And we'll determine the defense mechanisms and the role of metabolites um, in providing this resistance. So is it the glucosinolate content of the plant? Is it the role of, of hairs that are pre um, preventing feeding? Or is it the wax cuticle? And um, so we're going to be looking at, at all of this with our um, colleague, Fred Baudon, um, also at Rothamsted. And we're going to be doing a lot of field trials. We've already done one and we've got our second in the ground now. Um, these will be used to rain, um, look at commercial materials from collaborators and to compare their performance against the ones that we find best from the bioassays. And again, we will identify the genetic basis and mechani mechanisms behind differences in larval infestation in these um, field trials. We're also going to try to study how larval competition is affected um, through the different varieties. Maybe some um, some cultivars are able to tolerate um, larval infestation better than others. So this is the field trial. Um, at the moment, we've got 20 lines and they're replicated five times. Um, and we're, we're seeing nice differences. And as you can see here, um, there's nice differences in the phenology of the flowering um, and the growth of development. And we're finding that some cultivars that develop faster than others tend to do better. So in all of these um, feeding trial experiments, sorry, um, field trial experiments, we're taking the cotyledons at establishment and we're scanning those to find the proportion of leaf area that's been eaten by the cabbage stem flea beetle. And here, caveat, it's preliminary data, so don't get too excited, um, but we are finding um, clear differences between the lines that we're testing, as you can see in the ones that circle red, we are getting some lines that have significantly less feeding damage than other lines. So our next step is to try to understand why this is. Looking at the larvae um, and make possible larval antibiosis into the cultivars, we've developed a new method for um, easily and quickly assessing the number of larvae that are in the plant. Current methods um, for determining larval infestation um, involve taking the plant and dissecting it under the microscope to look for the larvae. And this is very, very labor intensive and very slow. Um, but we've developed uh, another method where we just lay them out on, um, on wire suspended above water and the larvae drop from the plant as the plant starts to desiccate. Um, and we've done some experiments to uh, understand how much time we should leave the, um, the larvae um, and how um, effective it is compared to dissecting the plant. And we found very, very um, close relationship between the number of larvae that drop um, from the plant and the number of larvae that um, we find in the trays after desiccation. And we think that you know, probably seven days is, is an adequate amount of time to allow the larvae to drop. So this is much faster than dissecting um, thousands and thousands of plants in the laboratory. So using this method, again, we found nice clear differences between the number of larvae um, that we're finding in these plants. So as you can see at the end there, um, two lines have you know, significantly less larvae in them um, than um, the, the, the two on the left-hand side of this um, graph. So we're finding nice differences um, in adult and larval um, pest damage in these varieties. 
Next, I'm going to turn over to conservation biocontrol, the other side of this um, IPM tri triangle, looking at what farmers can do to enhance the natural enemies and the antagonists of the orseed rape pests in their fields. And we're really excited that we have kind of discovered um, a new parasitoid of cabbage stem flea beetle. Um, this species was discovered in Rothamsted cultures in 1997. It took 10 years to um, identify it um, properly as a new species, and it was described by our colleagues at John Innes. Um, it's Macrotonus brassicae. Um, and we asked farmers across the UK to send us samples of their cabbage stem flea beetles so that we could better understand um, how much how much parasitism there is in the field and the distribution of that parasitism um, in the UK. So we we're really pleased that farmers from all over the UK send us samples, sometimes in crazy bottles, containers and bottles. And we had one packet that actually burst in the post and there's flea beetles bounced all over the post office, which um, caused some um, fear among the, the workers there. Um, but we found that they were present in 70% of the, the fields that we studied, um, and the parasitization rate was around um, 30%, which is really quite good um, for, um, for control. So in our future work, we are going to develop and use molecular diagnostics to try to quantify parasitism across the UK and Europe, um, and really try to better understand the influences of management um, on improving parasitism rates. A lot of farmers in the UK and now uh, and Europe are under sowing the, the rapeseed with things like clovers or other plants to try to confuse the insect, uh, the pest as it comes into the field. And um, this might help reduce the, the um, uh, prevalence of flea beetle, but is it also reducing the prevalence of parasitism? So we really need to understand that. And what is the influence of landscape? Again, farmers are starting to grow flowering field margins around the outside of their crops. And is this helping to reduce um, pesticides, um, pest prevalence? And is it helping to increase parasitism? So we're going to be looking at that in a new project called Growing Health at Rothamsted. And we're really lucky to have really a lot of farmer involvement and our stake holders um, in, in our work at Rothamsted. And we're hoping that together we can really fight the flea beetle problem and deliver really good practical tools for next generation IPM um, in, in rapeseed growing in the UK and get it back um, as, a, as a really good and reliable part of the rotation um, in, in arable cropping. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Thank you very much to be very well in time and uh, highlighting the IPM strategies and uh, the role of uh, biocontrol measures. As Dr. Sarma was mentioning in efforts also, you know, how to multiply, how to take the advantage of uh, these uh, predators, particularly the coccinellides and also this is abundant in the field. So these are the, you know, really techniques which can make, uh, you know, uh, the environment friendly uh, control measures of insect pest, otherwise, you know, lots of pesticide use, and uh, we have to reduce naturally the pesticide load. And in that context, IPM is the one of the wonderful techniques through which we can demonstrate uh, the farmers to use judiciously the chemicals and ultimately the use of various technologies so that the pesticide load is reduced and insect population is uh, minimized. So thank you, Dr. Cook, uh, to be with us. We some time to India. This is the crop season now for ribseed and mustard. Brassica, this is important crop. All through the Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, UP will go. You will find all yellow fields <laughs> everywhere. So this is a wonderful season, wonderful crop. Welcome any time to India and visit uh, the Brassica program and welcome uh, to this first off. I hope uh, you have uh, been able to listen to the other speakers as well uh, in this program. You must have got the whole program and I'm sure that you must have taken the advantage of that. So, thank you. Thank you, very much. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you.
Uh, now, next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. G. N. Hajarika, he is former director of research at Assam Agricultural University, Jorat. Uh, he is online. Uh, Dr. Hajarika will speak on technological dissemination and livelihood support at small farms. In uh, Assam, particularly, Prashika program has made a headway, particularly in northeastern parts of the country, eastern and northeastern parts. So we have to see, I mean, uh, what are the, you know, uh, now advances in the technological dissemination of uh, rape seed and mustard. Dr. Bajar, Ajarika, please. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Hello. It is visible. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Jian Hazarika, uh, resident consultant, uh, DRMR APART program, and the respected uh, chairman, Dr. Kumarji, and co chairman, Dr. Raiji, and esteemed uh, participants of ICVO2023. So, today's my presentation is, uh, as you as I mentioned, technology dissemination and livelihood support at small farmers. Basically, uh, it's the outcome of our study. Our this the DMR apart program is going on in Assam under World Bank project. So in basically outcome. So my next slide is a little bit uh, general nature. I will avoid this one because time, because of time constraint. And these are the different I think schemes we have under, uh, undertaken. Got to be in the undertaken after uh, independence. And outcome is that we are self-sufficient from I think sales from food surplus uh, from food scarce. And similarly in the left hand side also, in all seed also uh, we make a good headway. So leaving this slide, I'll go to my third slide. Uh, that is uh, a wide rap seed mustard. See uh, as Dr. Rice and so on. There are a lot many positive points are there for rap seed mustard. And why in Assam? Anyway, we know that Assam is a very rich, uh, having a very uh, rich uh, natural resources, uh, and will scope for uh, medicine mustard. But unfortunately, farmers are very poor. It, more than 85 percent are marginally small, having very less income compared to national average, only 5,638 compared to about 10,218. And also productivity also there, we grow FC mustard to a substantial area, but the productivity is very low, about 6.47 quintal compared to national level, it is 15.24. But there is a tremendous scope for that. Last two points I have shown the scope, that in Assam, we grow 18 lakhs winter rice, and out of 18 lakhs winter rice, nine lakhs are remaining fellow. And out of these nine lakhs, six lakhs are very suitable for uh, the rabi crops, especially pulse and oil seed, having uh, residual moisture. And from our demonstration plot, we have seen that production goes to 10, 15 quintal, whereas farmer's production is only 5 to 8 quintal. So there's tremendous scope. And the government of Assam is realizing this fact and giving, giving more space uh, through this uh, APART program. Thank you. Next. So this is, I think we can skip, this is a similar scenario in India. I think, although area is not increased, the production is much increased, product is much increased. So coming to the next slide, uh, in Assam condition, you can see the area remain constant, less for last many years, production is also constant and is also very constant. And main reason for this, there's so many different reasons are there, but main reason is that that rapeseed and mustard is still growing in traditional ways where flood is a uh, flood affected areas. That means where flood comes and in the winter when there's no flood, they go for uh, rapeseed and mustard. And that's why area remain constant. And now through this apart uh, program, we are trying to, uh, that means uh, do some uh, uh, using rice fellows land so that farmers can utilize rice lands. And I'll just describe the other points in the, my later slides. So this is out of uh, all like uh, seed mustard, about 92.48% is only rap seed. So our main emphasis is on oil crop. So this is a very old slide, but anyway, the situation remains same. 
the, the, that means even today, we are 70% deficient. That means whatever we produce uh, in Assam, we can cover only 30%. So this is only and similar the case with other uh, Northeast states. So I'll fail my duty if I only speak about uh, a part, the Assam Agribusiness Transformation Project. This is a World Bank funded project for 2000 crore. And it is, I think, started in 2018, 19. And the main objective of this is to, to add value and improve the resilience of selected agricultural value chains, specifically uh, at attempting to small uh, holder farmers, and also to improve the agri entrepreneurship and the in targeted districts. So this has very focused guiding principles. And if you can see this one, these principles are very dynamic and very up to date uh, distribution uh, approach. So that means the cluster approach, then again, increasing private sector participation, then improve public sector capacity building, then supporting the development of modern supply chain, then ICT, and improving producers' access to knowledge, technology, infrastructure. And I already mentioned that I, DMR, ICR is the, is the knowledge partner for uh, the head of seed master. And for uh, for rice, it is another partner. For a uh, lot many international centers, like your international fish research center, international vegetable, uh, world vegetable center for vegetable, international potato center is for potato. That means through a part program, lot many international and national uh, that means, uh, institutes are involved for increasing production. So this is, uh, I think in 2021, uh, we're given only seven districts and 22 cluster, but, but as our results are very fantastic and all are happy, the, the Department of Agriculture is very happy. And they are requesting the DMR to increase to up to 15 districts and total cluster now is 45. And these 15 districts fall in four agroclimatic uh, zones and which constitute about 80% of our uh, area and production of receipt to tell the production. So some uh, gaps are there. We have observed these gaps, but these are different technology gaps in master cultivation Assam. And these are very important. The farmers are growing traditional toria for different varieties and non descript varieties, non available to the seed, non adoption of improved technologies. And main important point is that due to adoption of very long duration uh, rice and varieties, that is Ranjit, Bahadur, like that, measuring in 150 days, and harvesting is in the month of November, last, up to last part of November. So definitely, this is a constraint, even though land is suitable, soil moisture is there, because of this habit, long duration uh, rice varieties, they cannot go for these rabbi crops. And now these areas are popular in uh, medium duration rice varieties, then so there is, and there is farmers are interested for that. And we are taking this advantage where this short duration or medium duration advantage are taken. DMR also involved and we are taking in cropping sequence mode. So we have uh, another again, I think five is very important. The five extension approaches. Number one is the skill development. As I told, already 5,400 common demonstration, crop demonstration, and 18,350 mini kits were done in the last two years. And this year, again, 5,000 uh, demonstration and 8,000 mini kits are going on. And total number of technical were 338 technical trainings were imparted in different stages. So these farmers, they are, they, they are knowing, I mean, in every step, they can do the thing. Okay. Then conducted about 294 field days. To farmers fair every uh, one year every year we really conducted uh, these exposure visits and also we are distributing so many uh, some uh, bulletins for that so next is uh, farmers lead extension and group approach generally we are selecting the beneficiary we select fig's or uh, farmers, farmers producers companies or ngos so then they play a commendable uh, role in participations and dissemination of knowledge and our policy, our slogan is that they, we help you and you help others. That means each beneficiaries are asked to give at least one kg seed to 10 farmers. And I'm sure 
that in this way, if the hybrid seeds are hiring seeds are distributed, so definitely there will be there will be response. There will be more production, uh, and moreover, a farmers producers company having members of 400, 500, 600. So if they can distribute the seeds to among themselves, then also uh, we can cover a, lot, a big area. Then ICT tools also used. Every district we have WhatsApp group, Facebook, and there any if farmers face any problem, they used to share their crops, uh, their views through your WhatsApp and Facebook. Next is your very important, the agri entrepreneurship and business inclusion through skill development. There's a provision of distribution of 45 mini oil color, one is class, cluster in a 80% subsidy rate, and to identify FPCs and POs in 15 districts. So this is with a view to develop interest for business. So that actually rapeseed mustard was sold to the middleman in a very cheap price. So we are trying our best so that these FPUs can produce their oil from uh, their own. Okay, already one mini oil expeller is installed in the verbing FPC in Mazuli, and they are doing marketing very nicely, organic oil. So I think I think this will be another uh, good approach for dissemination of our technology. Then last is very also important, the seed production program through FPC FPUs. So generally, many FC production programs of hiring variety, especially Toria 38, the recently notified variety, has been given to FPCs, and they're selling the seed. And last time, I think DMR has also purchased some amount of seed from Mazuli. This is a very good uh, way so that uh, seed is disseminated very easily to uh, local uh, uh, people. So this is our some achievements. Uh, I won't take much time. Uh, we have already uh, obtained activities there. There, training farmers training is master trainer training is there. Exposure videos there, and it is uh, so stringent. Policy in a part world bank was is very stringent. That we have to we have to finish activities in time, and we have already appointed uh, fifteen RAFs RF in each districts so that they can contact the individual farmers. So last year, the achievement is like mm -hmm. this. We have given four varieties. TS38 Toria was given less, but this time we are increasing because situation in, in our situation, Toria is one, uh, more fitted. And this, this early uh, mustard varieties, DMR12035, is recently notified varieties, then TM28 and NRC HB101 also given. And our demonstration component was uh, this uh, varieties, uh, seed treatment, balanced fertilizer, proper spacing, weeding, and need based upon plant protection measures. And apart from it, we are also taking post service management also. So these are the results. You can see the results in uh, IP and within farmer's practice. And Yield of our farmers' practice is substantially high. It's uh, from 31, 32% to about 40%. And additional net point return also quite high. And the seed ratio is very good. In, definitely in irrigated area, it is more than in unirrigated, it was less. So this is uh, a variety wise with performance. Same thing. And this is your overall IP against farmers across seven districts. And this is the next year in 2001-2002, and it's same continuing also 2002 and 2023, four zones, 15 districts. And it is shown that this time our data is much more and yield increase of our farmers practice is much higher. It is from 53 to 73 percent. So much higher, much encouraging. So this is again cost of cultivation and this gross monitoring return. Then again, BC ratios. This additional net monetary return see, by expanding 4,000, they can earn about 20, 24, 25,000. So, farmers are very much convinced with these results. 
And these are distinct wise uh, I have given this uh, in irrigated condition. What is the yield uh, range? Yield increase over percentage. Yield increase over farmers practice is about seventy nine percent up to seventy nine percent. And definitely in uh, irrigated rain fed condition it is less, but in Sipsego district because of rain we got more uh, yield over farmers practice. But anyway. This is also encouraging. So this is some uh, glimpse of activities we have done. Lots of many activities. The training, commerce fair, post service management. And this is uh, my last slide. The government is very, very interested for increasing area and production. And they have initiated a new master area expansion program for growing mustard in Sali Rice Fellows. And we have about 9 lakh hectare and government policy for 24 25, they will cover a 4 lakh sector. This time we are giving 50, we are providing 50,000 hectare and about beneficiary is about 1 lakh 25,000, giving about 0.5 acre per beneficiary. Then next year it will be 2, 2 lakhs, and 24-25 it will be 1.5 to tell the 4 lakh sector. So with the ultimate aim of doubling area by giving seed or by giving seed to FPCs or by demonstrations, and also by through dissemination of proper technology, doubling the productivity, and ultimately uh, within within 4-5 years, uh, we are aiming for self sufficient in the state. And it's not, uh, I think, uh, uh, quadruple, we can, if you can increase double or triple also, it will be tremendous for us. Thank you very much. So, so, so this is the, see, uh, see uh, uh, this is, uh, product, production in our demonstration. A beautiful crop. You cannot, you cannot imagine that this is a MI Assam. It is like your uh, Rastan and UP. Farmers are very much interested. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for a nice presentation on technological dissemination, use of ICT, social media platform, seed production program, and uh, the vision of the government to utilize the fellow rice lands for growing uh, uh, Toria. I think this is Toria, no? Yes, Toria. This is, this is uh, yeah, early mustard. Mustard or Toria? Yes. This is early mustard, PM28, but we are also focusing oh, yeah. on Toria also. Yeah. In irrigated area, we go for early mustard, and for that means uh, traditional area, we go for mustard. But for rice fellow, we are going for toria. Rice fellow, you are going for toria. Yes, because uh, this CS30, 30, 30, um, uh, you know, 38, these are uh, you know, very old varieties. No, no, CS38 is not old, it's recently eh? notified recently. Although it is developed by me long back. Long back, it has been developed. Maybe yes. might not have been, you know. Yes, yes. It is not modified. This is advantage for us, yes. But uh, uh, can't you try early duration mustard? Uh, yes, yes. We are trying. Uh, PM20, the NRC, then DMR15035, we are trying it. And they are performing well. But main problem is that where rice is grown, it is delayed and generally in the month of second week of March, we get rain. Mm -hmm. Main problem is that. But if you can popularize early, that means um, uh, sali varieties. Yeah, like yeah. DMI, oh, yeah. 100, uh, 130 yeah. days duration, like, like that. Our Sierra Dhan, I think, 309, 10, 11, like that. We are popularizing about 120 days duration. Then we can easily go for mustard, early mustard, which uh, our main intention is that. Okay. Okay, Dr. Jarika, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, bringing us to the eastern parts and the how you have taken a lead as far as the uh, dissemination is concerned and announcing the acreage in those regions, which is the lead and which is one of the niche area where certainly you can improve the production and uh, reduce the import of edible oils in the country. Uh, we have the last presentation in this session by Dr. Anupam Barik, uh, ex-additional commissioner, Department of 
agriculture and farmers welfare policy interventions market and trade consideration who will make a presentation sir i just present priya okay okay brief me kariyega over to dr ashok sharma who will present on behalf of dr barik so honorable <coughs> chairman professor arun kumar sir and co chairman dr p k rai sir and uh, our esteemed uh, <coughs> participant dr bhat sir dr ch sharma sir and i <coughs> all fellow uh, colleagues i am here uh, to present policy interventions market and trade considerations with special reference of the chief minister on behalf of uh, dr anupam barik who was served by additional commissioner of seed in department uh, of agriculture farmers welfare sir we all know we are engaged in the technology uh, development programs and some stakeholders are engaged in technology dissemination some are engaged in processing and some are engaged in uh, <coughs> production so uh, we can say the farmer so if we want to develop a particular crop if we want to the, uh, increase the production or productivity of the all seeds and uh, in general and rape seed mustard in particular then all stakeholders need a favorable policies from the government side and uh, we must take into considerations not only production aspect because uh, if we develop a technology and they are not reaching to the farmer then they has no meaning and even they are reaching to the farmers and farmers are adopting that technology and these technology after adopting by the farmers and farmers are not getting remunerative prices then they will be discouraged so it is the responsibility of all the stakeholders if we take a, as a mission mode to increase or enhance the oil seed productions in the country so what are the policy framework to our national mission so readable oils uh, sir currently Uh, government of india is implementing an uh, nfsm schemes for increasing oil seed production area expansion under oil palm all we know and uh, oil palm uh, scheme uh, has already been launched uh, with the uh, implementation with the aim to enhance the edible oil seed production and oil availability in the country by harnessing oil seeds and palm oil productivity and uh, enom nmop op already launched in uh, august 2021 and there is another uh, program uh, as a national mission on edible oils on oil seed is under the consideration by cabinet and uh, may launch soon it is expected that uh, by this march government will launch this uh, program and uh, budget allocations for oil palm is uh, uh, 11 1040 crore by 2025 26 and uh, expected budget for national mission on edible oil and oil seed age uh, would be about 10000 crore by 2025 26 under this mission and uh, sir we see uh, what is the target of government of india under this mission by 2025 26 so uh, important target is to reduce the import dependency from 60% to 40% this is the uh, big target and if we see the domestic production of edible oil in million tons then the target has been fixed up to 18 million tons uh, right from the 12.14 and we all know though there is a share from primary sources as well as the secondary sources also and uh, under this mission which is likely to launch soon uh, government has target uh, to bring the additional area up to 32.28 million hectare that will produce 54.1 million tons and productivity will be increase 1676 kg per hectare so it is a uh, mega mission and uh, under oil palm also government target is 10 lakh hectare that will give us uh, in the form of crude palm oil uh, productions uh, about 11.2 lakh tons 
So this is the overall scenario of the present and what is the target of the government. And uh, in a nutshell, we can say the government targeted to increase area under cultivation by 22% and uh, increase productivity by 21% and overall production increase by 48%. So this is the uh, uh, target under this mission and all the stakeholders need to work in the coordination to achieve this target and uh, government has framed some policies to support all the stakeholders. So what is the strategy uh, uh, will be included in this uh, program? Uh, increase seed replacement ratio with focus on varietal replacement, seed rolling plants, seed up, seed mini case, seed distribution. We all know the importance of the quality seed and lack of availability of quality seed among the farmers and different states is the one of the major concerns. So improving productivity of oil seed crops, increasing irrigation coverage under oil seeds, because uh, uh, in case of, uh, if we talk about the uh, rapeseed mustard, so large area is under the rain-fed condition. So diversification of area from low yielding, uh, low yielding cereals crop to oil seed crops, intercropping of oil seed with cereals, pulses, sugar cane, and use of fallow land after paddy, potato cultivation, particular northeastern regions, as uh, Dr. Hajarika just recently presented. And mustard, soya bean, sunflower, groundnut mission to increase productivity. These will be the uh, major crop. And uh, sir, one interesting thing you can see earlier as uh, my, per my experience and I have seen the history uh, among all the major oil seed crop, rapeseed mustard was given the least importance and you know the directorate earlier NRC uh, was uh, opened uh, at the last after the uh, groundnut, then soya bean, then uh, mustard. Uh, government focused on the rapeseed mustard, but now everyone has realized that the rapeseed mustard is the only crop which can meet the uh, our requirement so government has uh, uh, targeted what is the rapeseed mustard you can see the present scenario uh, that uh, there is the of the uh, edible oil productions in case of measure 20.66 and uh, if you see the uh, target for 25 uh, 26 then target is 55.24 so if you see the presently groundnut is at the top, then soya bean is the second and rapeseed mustard is the first, but 2025-26 rapeseed mustard will be first if we are uh, succeed in our efforts with the uh, support of the government and you can see the contribution will be the maximum of uh, rapeseed mustard. So this is the overall scenario what government has uh, uh, fixed the target under this oil seed mission. And uh, when we see the rapeseed mustard importance in double oil sector, sir, all we know, rapeseed mustard contributed 26.25% uh, in the total primary edible oil productions. Uh, that is 78.70 lakh tons during 2020 and 21. And productivity of rapeseed mustard India is the lowest among the major rapeseed growing countries. But uh, as the policy are favorable and government is emphasized, so we are hopeful that uh, we will succeed. So this is the scenario of rapeseed mustard. And uh, what uh, DSC has already uh, done or doing uh, in case we see the oil seed, then increasing productivity and acreage under oil seeds are the two prongs approach uh, along with the strategies, action plans. And oil seed production have shown a growth of 42% from 25.25 million tons in 2015-16 to 37.69 million tons in 2021-22. And uh, action plan for three-year seed rolling plan uh, for all oil seed will produce a total of 14.7 lakh quintals of quality seeds of uh, new high yielding varieties in this. And the average yield gap in the world is about 60%. So target is to reduce the yield gap to 20% in the next five years, leading to 13 to 14 million tons, additional productions of edible oils. Then in case of rapeseed mustard, sir, uh, since Ravi 2020, uh, Department of Agriculture, Farmer, Farmer Welfare has launched a special program for rapeseed mustard to increase its area from 67 lakh hectares to 75 lakh hectares and production from 91 lakh tons to 125 lakh tons by 2025-26, uh, which is the current production as uh, uh, 117.46 lakh tons. And a total of uh, 368 districts of th 13 states have been targeted for increasing yield through high yielding varieties, hybrid distribution, seed mini kits up to the more than 20 quintals per hectare yield. And mustard mission resulted, sir, increased production by 29% from 9.12 million hectare to 11.74 million ton in last two years. 
the productivity showed 10% jump from uh, 1331 to 1458 kg per hectare. The area has increased by 17%. So farming community, ICR, SCU, KVK, Zikri said, and all the stakeholders, including the state government, deserve this congratulations. And then uh, what is the suggested policy initiatives uh, on rapeseed mustard? The following policy initiatives are suggested under this mission, sir. Uh, policy measures for increasing the farmer to make a shift from rice, curry, wheat, ravi cycles, as you uh, all know the government is emphasizing, particularly in Punjab, Haryana, and uh, Western UP, uh, to substitute the wheat by uh, mustard. So this can be done by giving the additional remunerative prices uh, as uh, Punjab and Haryana farmers are getting the short prices for wheat. So they are reluctant to for diversification with mustard, but if uh, they are given the assurance for all seed, and if five to ten percent area is reduced by wheat, then there will be no harm in the wheat production. So uh, this is the one uh, initiative the government is taking, and another is uh, to bring the areas of uh, rice fellows, particularly Assam, Tripura, Manipur, and northeastern state like Chhattisgarh, Odisha without sacrificing the food and nutrition security of the country. So this is the uh, one of the important aspects. Then, sir, another important aspect is there is a need for private sector involvement in this mission for implementation because government sector has some limitations. As you all know that there is a problem with staff. Even any, many KVKs, they have only two or one person. So it is not possible to organize all the program and produce the seed. So there is a, also a need to private sector involvement uh, in uh, even a seed production program. And uh, in the limited basis, they are also organizing the many training programs, extension programs. Uh, for uh, making the farmers aware about the scientific technology of rapeseed mustard to increase the production and productivity. So it will be better if the uh, government supports the private sector and they involve in this uh, um, mission also. Then, sir, uh, public-private partnership mode project. Government has uh, pl planning has planned uh, to form uh, two policies, sir. One is agriculture value chain development and another is intensive agriculture development program. So government wants to, uh, private players to come forward and make the investment uh, in oil processing, storage facilities like that. And uh, government is ready to support uh, for a uh, policy measure. So this is another uh, PPP mod project, although this is under consideration, not finalized, but uh, almost uh, as per the uh, instruction from the top uh, level officials, uh, they are emphasizing on PPP mode project. And then, sir, need for seed hub for Epsilon mustard by private seed companies also. Sir, uh, uh, DSE and uh, uh, FW created 35 uh, oil seeds up for uh, oil seed. And uh, out of which, eight uh, seed up was for Epsilon mustard, which uh, were running by some. Uh, uh, research stations and KVK also, and they are producing about 5,000 uh, quintal certified seed for every year. But uh, as we know, we uh, require much more seed. So there is also need, uh, not only for private sector, government sector also, so there is a need to increase the seed of also uh, for rape seed mustard, uh, quality seed production. Then no blending of mustard oil, you all know, uh, in uh, 1st uh, October 2020, FSSI banned for uh, this blending of mustard oil, but due to the High Court uh, stay order, uh, it was revoked uh, and uh, then it disgraced the farmers uh, to get the uh, proper price and uh, even market. Uh, consumers are not able to get the pure seed, but again from uh, 1st June 2021, government has also uh, again banned for blending of mustard oil. So this will support uh, uh, our farmers to get the good price and uh, will provide a pure seed. Uh, it, uh, then honeybee linked with mustard cultivation, sir, all we know the role of honeybees uh, in pollination. So in case of mustard cultivation, we have seen the farmers uh, one get, there is abundance of the uh, flowering. So even farmers can get uh, 25 to 30 kg honey from one box and if he, he keep, uh, 50 box uh, per hectare, uh, then there will be 20 to 20 percent uh, yield increase, quality increase, and the farmers can get the additional income from the selling of the 
see so there is also a need to promote the honey bee uh, cultivation particularly with the mustard uh, farmers then assured procurement by naped and central agency although last two years farmers are getting remunerative price but there is uh, some fluctuations so particularly sir newer areas uh, where we are going to bring the additional areas uh, north eastern area uh, so uh, all uh, we need that there should be assured procurement by so that farmers uh, can get the motivation then there is a need of mass uh, campaign for optimum use of edible oils as per icma recommendations uh, 12 kg per person per person is the recommendation but uh, we know the consumption is 20 kg per year per person so there is a need of uh, awareness program so this is all about uh, this uh, policy frames uh, thank, 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 uh, thank you thank you sir. thank you thank you so we complete these uh, presentations uh, four in number from dr sh sharma dr hajarika dr anupam barik and dr samanta cook so if uh, out of those four presentations someone has to make some query question or anything even the person who are online they can also ask question or share their views हम्म उसमें भी वेरिएशन है और राइस के बाद लगाते हैं ना काफी फील्ड फ्लडिंग रहता है और कहीं पहले हो जाती है कहीं लेट हो जाती है इसीलिए कई बार वहां उतारा कल्टीवेशन की बात करते हैं so thank you very much uh, uh, we have another session but it's a tea time should be break for tea or uh, huh or uh, should we have one or two presentation and then break for tea huh uh, we can take uh, one or two presentation because it's already 15 minute lunch acha acha okay okay so dr bv singh must be ready Uh, for advances in rape seed and mustard breeding so dr bb singh uh, kindly quickly present within 7 minutes advances in the field and mustard breeding only highlights okay sir so respected most respected chairman and dr arvind kumar sahab uh, dr p k r sahab as co chairman uh, esteemed members of our qrt dr s c sharma ji which uh, has been concluded and uh, dr bhat sahab he is still our member of rsc so and our uh, partners from acrep drmr dr mahak singh ji and the persons who has joined us online so this is the uh, topic given to me advances in rapeseed and mustard breeding actually uh, since inception of acrep are more than 200 varieties they have been released for different situations but if we see the last decade that is 2010 to 
Almost more than 90 varieties have been released from the state as well, Central Variety Release Committee. And apart from it, many hybrids and also the biofortified varieties, they have also been released. And if you see this, these are two contrasted groups. One is mustard and one is rapeseed. As you know, based on the petulated and sessile, uh, that is botanical character, these two groups were grouped. But both the type of crop that is self-pollinated and cross-pollinated, they fall under both the groups. And according to the breeding strategies designed. This is the interesting figure. If you see the decade by productivity of mustard, that is the 11.85 uh, kg per hectare to uh, 1,511 kilogram per hectare. So there is a sharp increase of more than 20% in this decade. And this is due to the release of the high-yielding varieties matching with the production and protection technologies. But uh, as a breeder, I would like to give the uh, contribution to the release of the seed system and the high-yielding varieties. If you see the varietal development, sir, these are the four major objectives, that is the genetic enhancement of seed and oil yield, and particularly for the specific ecology, that is the timely sown, red fed, it may be the cell line condition, it may be the early sown condition. Again, development of resistant and tolerance varieties for various biotic and abiotic stress. And one more important thing, which is now getting popular, that is the biofortified varieties, that is low erucic and low glucosylate. Sir, these are the different situations. If you group all these situations over the country, these are the six major situations. They may be the early zone, timely zone, timely zone, rain fed, late zone, cell and condition and quality. These are the advancement. And as I said earlier, we have released more than 250 varieties since inception of ACRIP RM. And not only the varieties, we have also developed 96 novel genetic stock till date for the different traits. We can introduce these characters into our high-yielding high genetic basis. Sir, these are the early shown varieties. And if we see the early shown situation, mainly three uh, parts, Toria, Yellow Sarson, Early Mustard. And if you see from the 2010 to 2021, number of varieties have been released. And some of the varieties like Tapeswari, you can see Raj Vijayaturiya 3, Raj Vijayaturiya 2, Ajat Chetna, and Jyoti for the Assam conditions. These are the good varieties, and they mature in uh, uh, less than 190 days. Likewise, the yellow sarsom, we have the good variety, YSS401, and the Pitamari, this is the very leading variety. And we can get the good eat potential up to 1.5 ton per hectare with the less maturity duration. Again, this is the earliness in mustard. And we have the varieties that uh, PM28, this is a good variety and an apart program also, it is performing very good. And having the high yield potential along with the low maturity duration. So this is the combination, but in this earliness group, we need to reduce the maturity period in 100 to 105 days so that we can fit in the different ecology and rice fuel area, areas and the early zone varieties. So there is still need to work more, reducing the maturity with the same yield. Again, this is the timely zone mustard. And in this decade, we have released more than 10 varieties and leading varieties that is the Giraj is the leading variety and it is still popular. And it crossed the, all the zones. Originally it was released for the zone second, but we see the popularity in zone third also, zone four also, and it is uh, giving the high real potential in various conditions. Again, you can see the Ajad Mahak and this KMR 16-2. These are the latest notified varieties from this uh, Kanpur, though these are the state varieties. Again, these are the, some of the varieties. And recently, one uh, major advancement is the release of the nils for the white trust resistant. And these three particular nails in the Rohendi, Pusabold, and Varuna background from the uh, this uh, uh, marker state selection, they were released uh, during 2022. So this is the latest development and uh, product of the marker state selection. Again, this is the late zone mustard. And from the DRMR, two varieties after a, uh, release of the NRCSV 101, two varieties, Radh 
kind of Vrajra, they have been released for the June 2nd. And these are the good varieties. We are popularizing these varieties and these are also in the seed chain. Again, Renfed mustard, sir, we have released good varieties, RH725. This is a leading variety from the Hisar. And uh, our center developed one 50 35 and it is very popular variety in Assam and Northeastern states. Although it was for the early con sown conditions, but it, it is also popular in the rent fed conditions. Sir, these are the salt and mustard and the Karnal Center doing the wonderful work. And these are the latest leaves. In the 2022, these three varieties were leased, including the state leaves for the UP and also the center leaves. Sir, this is just a uh, brief of the hybrid development. As you know, initially two CMA systems, we worked Ogu and Tora and one in Breska Nepas, and then seven CMA systems were discovered. And the NRC PV New Delhi under the evil guidance of Dr. Bhatt, sir, the CMS fertility restore system were corrected and developed, chlorosis were rectified. And now we see that this Mori system is very perfect and we are getting the very good hybrids. So this is the just history, first commercial hybrid PGSH1 on the basis of the TOR CMS system but developed in this Gobi Sarso. Then in Indian mustard, under the evil guidance of Dr. Arvind Kumar, sir, two hybrids, that is the NRCSV506 and DMS1. They were released in the 2008-2009. And then the Advanta released the two more hybrids, that is Coral 432 and 437. Again, sir, I would like to emphasize on the current efforts in the hybrid development. And during 2015, the CRP hybrid technology program was initiated with four centers, that is the Hisar, Ludhiana, IRI, and DRMR as the rural center. And uh, in this, uh, you will see that seven hybrids, they have been promoted to EST1. For the first time, this is the good promotions. Although the relaxation was given from 10 to 15, 5% over the best hybrid check, but the over varietal check, it is same, that is the 10%. And a result in EST1 in June 2nd, we have promoted seven hybrids. So these are the four hybrids from the DRMR itself. And you see, sir, uh, DRMR edge 2518, DRMR edge 1117, DRMR edge 430. These are excelling the best check by more than 5%, even having the superiority in the white resistance. So we are combining the WRR and also the low erucic acid in the high linguist. Okay. Sir, this is the just a summary of the Conclude experimental Kiji. hybrids. Kiji. Experimental hybrids of the four centers and we see the, the hybrids released from DRMR and the this HESTAR center. They are excelling the best check. Sir, these are the list of the hybrids released from the ACRIP system and seven hybrids we have released from this aggression till date. These are the Gobi Sarsum varieties. One, this, uh, this is the fortified varieties of the quality oil. As you know, that we have developed the marker stress selection for the erucic acid and the low glucose set. And as a result, we have developed the many good varieties for the double low. And we know that our uh, prime minister also dedicated uh, this PDZ1 to the nation last year. Sir, these are the quality mustard varieties in this Gobi Sarso. And these are the varieties for the specific situations in the uh, different uh, rapeseed mustard group. This is the program for the mass program. It is also uh, running at three different centers, New Delhi, Diyamana, Bharatpun, Ludhiana. And I would like to uh, uh, say here that uh, two entries, they were promoted to the ABT1 from this and two to three genetic stocks were registered as a result of this. These are the, some of the genetic potency advantage and we know that three nils this year and also this DMH11, it has been approved by GSE for the open field trials. Sir, these are the, some of the challenges. We know that is the utilization of Rapsidmus germplasm and the most important, that is the heterosis enhancement. It is, is, is still an issue. Next is the high-yielding varieties hybrids for the seed mill quality. Although we have in good situation, but we have to increase the yield levels. Development of thermophotoinsistive genotypes. This is the need 
for the varied situations and the cultivars with high water and nutrient use efficiency, designer breast cup for hyaluronic acid and for the different biotic and biotic stresses. So thanks, sir, thank you, for giving me thank the you, time. For, uh, thank you, sir. Very good presentation. Lot of uh, good work has been done as far as the varietal development part is concerned. You can very well see compared to other crops in all, most all the species, uh, there are uh, quite a number of varieties which are high yielding. And one thing uh, I was also not knowing about this Rohini, where yes, this, uh, this is uh, morning it was talked about shattering resistance and Bharatpur people did not leave it because it didn't uh, shatter even under the high temperature situation. So that's a plus point with it. And now it is white rust because it became susceptible. Yes, sir, yes. Now white rust resistance has come in this variety. So I think that's a very good achievement. And also the level of heterosis, which is, you know, as you have rightly pointed out, we need to enhance the heterosis level. But at least the things are yes, coming sir. up, things yes, are moving. Sir. That is the thing. You cannot, um, uh, you know, build up a, you know, nation just in one day or bring a variety overnight, but things are in a right direction. And I am sure that the breeding program will certainly make a headway in recent years. And when we have national mission on oil seeds and oil, uh, there should be a separate mission because when it is tagged by oil farm somewhere, the, the advantages of this oil seed mission or attention may be diverted. But this is good that this is being now considered efforts are being made. And definitely it will make an impact. It will certainly make an impact. And Brasiga is a crop where there is a lot of scope is there. It needs only proper monitoring, evaluation, and all kinds of things. Proper direction it is needed. Everything is in place. Variety is in place. Technology is in place. Everything is in place. So I'm sure that uh, significant achievements uh, will be made. And this will certainly make an impact in the not only Indian economy, but global economy, like sunflower. Ukraine war is there now, sunflower, everybody is crying for sunflower, area is going down, safflower area is going down. This is the only crop where area is going up and up. So that's a plus point and we must harness the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Bibi Singh. Thank, Thank you very much. Thing. Next is uh, Dr. Naveen Singh is here. Dr. H.K. Sarma. And after that, we will break for tea. Management of refit and mustard germ plant. Please be brief. Very brief. Respected uh, Chairman Dr. Arvind Kumar, sir, uh, Co-Chairman Dr. P. K. Rai, sir, uh, Dr. S. R. Bhatt, sir, Dr. S. C. Sarma, sir, and uh, delegates, myself, Dr. Haryam Sarma, I am presenting the work on the management of rapeseed mustard germ plant. These are the, our objective collection and acquisition of rapeseed mustard germ plant, bee generation and midterm conservation, characterization and evolution, and distribution. This is the germplasm status at DRMR. Total, we are having the 2,548 germplasm, out of which maximum we are having of Brassica Junsia 1904. And, uh, and after that, uh, Brassica uh, uh, Rapa 243 uh, accessions, and basic, uh, Yellow Sarsu 177, and Brassica Nepas 129. Apart from this, we are having some wild species, Brassica Tornophotai, Crambe, and Lepidium. Uh, this is the state-wide distribution, uh, indigenous collection. Uh, we are having the uh, collection from almost all the states. And in, in, in the uh, uh, exotic collections, we are having collections from uh, Canada, uh, United States, Sweden, UK, Germany, uh, China, and Australia. This is the basic difference in uh, rapeseed mustard species. Main difference is the, in the leaf morphology. And uh, rapeseed, this is the leaf star style, while in uh, mustard is stocked or petiolated. 
other major difference is the seed uh, seed size in 3 to 4 gram in uh, rapeseed mustard and in mustard it is 3.5 to 6 gram except basica nigra in a basic uh, rapeseed is uh, rapeseed group two species are mainly their basica nepus and rapa basica rapa and uh, in mustard group basica juncea canata and nigra comes this is the mating system on the basis of mating system we used to maintain the germplasm only the three uh, amphidiploid species that, that is basica gensia carinata and basica nepas these are self compatible and rest are self incompatible except that yellow sarsum that is also self compatible this is the germplasm acquisition and collection is one of the activity of uh, our institute so uh, in uh, last two years uh, three years we have uh, acquired 1380 accessions of rep seed mustard and these are mainly uh, obtained from the NUPGR. this is the uh, one of the another activity the regeneration we used to maintain the germplasm in phagic manner uh, year wise as per and uh, as per the requirement following the suitable pollination technique and conserve them in medium term germplasm storage facility this is the distribution uh, in last five years we have distributed 3775 germplasm to different indenters these are the cultivated species which are maintained uh, in a drmr these are the morphological variations in different basic uh, crop basic species and uh, we can see here that the seed size varied from 1.3 gram basica nigra to up to 5.75 gram or more than 6 gram in Indian mustard. While in other basic species, this is a 3 to 4 gram seed size is there. These are the wild, some of the wild basic species at basic at DRMR, basica fruticulosa, basica tornophotai. This is the crambe, lepidium, synapis alba. Uh, as evaluation is one of the activity of uh, our project. So we used to evaluate the germplas for specific traits also. Since uh, we know that the under late zone condition mustard has to face the high temperature stress dur during the reproductive stage uh, uh, when the crop is sown after the harvest of cotton and paddy. Therefore, uh, heat becomes the uh, very limiting factor uh, for the late zone crop. In this view, we have skinned 986 accessions of Indian mustard under late zone condition, and and from and in phagic manner, uh, phagic manner in uh, three years from the uh, from these lines we have uh, uh, found 61 lines promising which are having the thousand seed weight more than four gram, and the some lines which are uh, some lines are very good which are having the seed weight up to uh, 6.5 gram, and some. Uh, Lines we found which are having the seed weight as well as the yield. Uh, 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 this is the another set of the uh, accessions we have screened for terminal heat tolerance. We can see here that, that a very good material we have uh, isolated. We have screened the uh, we have studied the effect of the terminal heat stress on different traits, and we found that uh, maximum reduction which was uh, observed in a seed yield per plant up to 34%, which was followed by 1,000 seed weight. This was, uh, in 1,000 seed weight, this was affected. And we observed the seed yield reduction up to, uh, yield reduction up to 21% and followed by secondary branches, 21%. And least reduction was observed in all content. This is the character association under let's own condition. We found that the seed yield per plant had significant and positive correlation with 1000 seed weight. Therefore, we have selected the material on the basis of 1000 seed weight under let's own conditions. We have estimated some stress tolerance index and we observed that seed yield under stress condition has significant and positive association with, uh, with the mean productivity index and stress tolerance index. So we have used the stress tolerance index as one of the criteria for selection of these lines. As the, as the stem rot is one of the devastating disease of the rep seed mustard under congenial condition, it can cause real yield reduction up to uh, 30%. So with this view, we have screened our entire set of germplasm of Indian mustard. Preliminary, we have identified 19 lines for stem, uh, through stem inoculation technique. 
after that we screen this line in stick plot also and from the from this the five lines we have uh, identified which are being evaluated again in sick plots. This is the morphological variations uh, for uh, uh, Indian mustard. These are the some of the promising lines we have identified for different rats. Uh, and uh, in uh, other uh, rap seed mustard group, we have evaluated yellow source of germplas 140 lines. From the from this 140 germplas lines, 141 uh, exception we have. Uh, selected on the basis of thousand seed weight, all content and silica bearing. From this uh, four lines, we have identified promising for uh, for thousand thousand seed uh, seed yield per plant as well as for uh, silica bearing. These are being used in hybridization program. This is the morphological variation for frequency. This is the mor uh, morphological variation for silica types and orientation and silica length. This is the trait specific germpla status at DRMR. Total 90, out of 96 germplas registered in rapeseed mustard, our institute has registered 31 trait specific germplas. If we see the year wise registration status, in last five years we have registered 16 germplas, maximum during this last five years. This is the trait specific germplas registered by our institute, 10 for thermal tolerance and 8 juvenile stage. Two exceptions we uh, two genetic stocks we have registered for uh, terminal stage, uh, the four for drought tolerance, seven for white rust, and uh, two for quality traits. This is the way forward. This, since we are having the uh, very less uh, number of jump plus, so uh, as per the recommendation of our QRT and RSC, this year we have planned for uh, plant two exploration missions, uh, one in Himachal Pradesh and another in Uttarakhand for collection of wild species as well as for the collection of uh, Brisica rapa germplas. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. I think uh, we can make a discussion after, you know, tea and we will assemble after 15 minutes. So 4.35 or so. So kindly bear with us. Uh, we have a less presentation out of 10. We have only five rapid uh, Oral PowerPoint presentation, so that will save time. So, huh? uh, so I think uh, panel discussion we may be able to maybe by five fifteen or so. Okay, thank you, sir. Wow. 
आधा घंटा हो जाए आए नहीं सर जब एंटर साहब की लैब में थे एंटर साहब के बिल्कुल खास आदमी और एक दूसरी चाय है वहां भी चलो सकते हैं ये तो सोसाइटी का सर्टिफिकेट लेना था सोसाइटी के ऊपर मेहनत किया इसमें ज्यादा तो मगर कौन कह रहा है कौन कह रहा है हां हां सही का हां 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 बताओ नहीं नहीं आप बताओ तभी देंगे हां
एक दो सोसाइटी में ऐसे ही बन गया सोसाइटी में गए तो भी चार चार हजार रुपए ले लिए लाइफ के तो फिर नेक्स्ट बोले हम फिर रवि नहीं देंगे अरे तो फिर चाहे तो पैसे लिए थे हमारे पास बना देना तो आप मना थोड़ी करेंगे लेकिन मैं तो यहाँ पे पिछले पंद्रह साल से हूँ कोई नहीं बना
Next presentation from Dr. R. S. Jard, principal scientist from DRMR, resource conservation technologies for ribs and mustard, production and productivity. डॉक्टर जाट बहुत ब्रीफ में करिए क्योंकि नेक्स्ट सेशन भी हमारा ऑलरेडी काफी डिले हो गया रेस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर अरविंद कुमार सर फॉर्मर वाइस चांसलर आर एल बी सी आई यू झांसी को चेयरमैन डॉक्टर पी के राय सर डायरेक्टर डी आर एम आर एंड 
dignitaries of the dais. My topic is on resource conservation technologies in rapid mustard. As we know that present day concerns increasing uh, the effects of climate change, mainly declining factor productivity and declining groundwater table, low water use efficiency and plateauing the crop yields at reduced biodiversity, multi-nutrient deficiency. Most of the nutrients nowadays become deficient in, uh, all over India in patches. Labor and energy shortage are there. High production cost, diminishing farm product profitability, rampant of degradation of natural resources and climatic variability. These are the uh, very much uh, uh, important presenting concerns like uh, they affect the uh, land degradation, water erosion, and crop residue burning. These are the most, open, most important issues that uh, needs to be tackled in the present times to increase the production and nutrient or factor productivity. If we talk about the parcel factor, factor productivity of NPK, particularly in mustard, then uh, 10 years data in AICRP analyzed and it, is, it was found that nitrogen use efficiency is very less in, in mustard. It is around 26% on an average and 46% uh, uh, phosphorus use efficiency. However, the potassium use efficiency is higher because it's it accumulating more uh, potassium in the plant. If you, see, uh, talk, if you see the parcel effect productivity of total food grains in India, and initially it was uh, very high because the rate of application was uh, low, and at that time it was high, but uh, uh, in the uh, Green Revolution era and then after the application use increased, that's why the nutrient efficiency, use efficiency decreased over the years. And uh, resource conservation technologies, that uh, they can answer these problems because they build up the soil organic carbon, which is one of the most important factor in the soil and it arrests the declining factor productivity, enhance the nutrient use efficiency by creating favorable uh, environment for microflora and microfauna in the soil. And it helps in sequestering the greenhouse gases in the soil because of increasing organic matter and reduce the cost and energy use, effic use efficient input use, stable yields and better use of re natural resources, saving surface soil uh, from erosion and reduce the water requirement of crops by cutting evapotranspiration. evaporation. So these uh, practices, uh, overall, they may be the any management uh, process, practices or technologies that increase the factor productivity, including, including land, labor, capital, and inputs, they called the resource conservation technologies. And uh, particularly, these are the uh, important, like a ledger land leveler, zero tillage or minimum tillage, raised bed planter, residue retention. These are the uh, technologies that can increase the factor productivity of resources, increase the soil health, increase the environment health. In rapid, in a mustard particularly, we have done an experiment uh, for five years on conservation agriculture based on the cropping system uh, mode. And uh, here we followed all three principles of conservation agriculture system diversi diversification, residue retention and tillage practices. And uh, we retained the previous crop residue in the field, then sown the crops either in zero tillage or uh, permanent beds with residue retention and compared with the conventional tillage practices. And we harvested very good yield. Uh, the data presented here on residue, uh, residue retained in different cropping systems as, the, as well as tillage practices. Here we retained uh, the residue from 2.5 ton uh, uh, per hectare to uh, 4.2 uh, ton per hectare in different cropping systems and tillage practices. This is the uh, creek crops yield under different tillage and cropping systems. And uh, here uh, we can see the maize uh, recorded the highest uh, seed yield under different uh, management practices of bed planting with the residue, zero tillage with residue and lowest in the conventional tillage without residue. The yield productivity and economics of different crops in different systems and tillage practices showed here that uh, the mustard seed yield recorded maximum in permanent beds with residue and lowest in the conventional tillage. Likewise, we uh, analyzed the Kharif crops yield, then total system yield and system equivalent yield in terms of mustard equivalent yield. Net returns also analyzed and relative economic efficiency. If you see the relative, relative economic efficiency of different tillage practices, then permanent bed, uh, permanent raised bed with residue 
is a 20.3 percent more uh, efficient, uh, economically efficient than the conventional tillage without residue. And zero tillage is 6.2 percent higher economic uh, returns accrued. Among the different cropping systems, this uh, maize mustard cropping system uh, found more sustainable, more profitable than other uh, systems. If we see the interaction effect of tillage residue and cropping systems, then again, this uh, uh, bed planting with residue of uh, maize mustard followed by green gram mustard followed by uh, cluster bean mustard is more profitable than other systems. And these systems uh, um, then higher in zero tillage, uh, zero tillage with residue and lowest in conventional tillage without residue. If you see the resource use efficiency, productivity and sustainability of different tillage practices with residue and uh, cropping systems, then again, sustainability index in a permanent bed with residue uh, was higher, followed by uh, this zero tillage and conventional tillage. Production efficiency again higher with the permanent beds with residue, economic efficiency higher, and water productivity. Though water productivity of residue, uh, permanent beds with residue is uh, less, uh, is highest, uh, then followed by zero tillage with, uh, with residue and lowest in conventional tillage without residue. Among different cropping systems, the sustainability index of maize mustard system is highest, then followed by the this uh, uh, legume based systems, cluster bean and green gram. And again, water productivity of these systems is higher. If you see the sustainability interaction effects of these indices, then again, maize mustard under the permanent bed with residue is higher. Uh, integrated uh, irrigation water productivity again higher in uh, bed planting with residue and production efficiency. Important part of this is soil health. If you see the soil organic carbon content in the soil, then in a permanent bed with residue, the uh, at both the soil layers, 0 to 15 and 15 to 30 centimeter, the uh, this was a soil organic carbon content was higher compared to conventional release. And if you see the partial factor productivity of uh, NPK, then it was higher in uh, the permanent bed with residue. Among different cropping systems, the sustainability, uh, the soil organic carbon content was higher in maize mustard system, in a green gram mustard system, which is a legume, and followed by this uh, maize mustard system at both the layers. Then factor productivity for nitrogen, again, it is higher in the legume based system, and then uh, maize mustard system. But the phosphorus productivity, the phosphorus uh, partial factor productivity and potassium uh, factor productivity was higher in maize mustard system. If we, uh, also the energy use were analyzed in different systems, these different tillage practices. And we see, we can see that source wise energy use was higher in like a human energy seat, uh, this conventional tillage water use was higher in this diesel consumption in conventional tillage. And the fertilizer use was low in the conventional tillage because in the, the permanent beds and the zero tillage with residue, we applied more nitrogen to alleviate the immobilization effect of higher organic matter at initial stage. But we see, if you see the residue retention, this contributed more input energy to the system, but this is uh, used as an, as an input energy. So, it, uh, it is uh, always beneficial in the system because uh, this is residue input. And we also calculated the op operation wise input energy. Then again, it is higher maximum in land preparation under the conventional tillage systems. And uh, in different tillage irrigation, plant production, harvesting. So like this, we calculated. And if you see the output energy, this is most important for the sustainability and environmental health. Then uh, this uh, bed planting with residue under the maize mustard system, this has recorded the highest output energy. So this is about the factor productivity and use of different factors. Uh, they're more efficiently and uh, more useful. But uh, if you see the nutrient use efficiency at different uh, increasing levels of the crop yield simultaneously with the, uh, their application rates, that at initial stage with low yield and low uh, nutrient application, the nutrient use efficiency was higher. But with the increasing application rates and the uh, crop yield increased, but at decreasing rates, the mis uh, miscellic uh, law of diminishing return applied here 
and at the maximum yield, the yield was highest, but the nutrient efficiency, nutrient huge efficiency was lowest. So, how to increase this uh, nutrient huge efficiency under these conditions? So, conservation agriculture can can might be a answer, and they can they can be used to increase the genetic potential of the crops to increase the nutrient huge efficiency. But the adoption of these uh, CA practices is still Can't low. Put, yeah, Farmers put, are yeah. not adopting these practices because of certain uh, constraints. Like they believe that the traditional way of cultivation, they still they believe that this is the best system. And the second most important constraint is machinery. The machinery is no, not available for conservation agriculture practices. And uh, the third important was the Farmers, they don't know anything about the seed. Like, uh, it means they are not aware uh, with these technologies. Then they, uh, at the, uh, during the initial years, they reduce the yields and farmers fear that they, their productivity may go down. But uh, in the long term, these practices are very beneficial. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. There are uh, implements available, but maybe not tuned to the mustard crop like happy cedar and yes. so many you know uh, sector driven implements have come up and conservation agriculture now is picking up the target is to bring from 3.2 million hectare to around 20 million hectares yes. in next uh, by 2030 so this is a technology which is the technology for the future okay thank you very much thank you sir. Uh, next is uh, dr pankaj sarma Principal scientist uh, from DRMR Bharatpur, advances in rapeseed mustard disease management. Over to Dr. Sarma. Uh, please uh, be brief. Try to sum up within the given time. Very good afternoon to all. Uh, most respected chairman, co-chairman, esteemed uh, Professor Bhatt sir, Professor S.C. Sarma sir and colleagues. I, here my topic is the advances in rapeseed mustard disease management. As we know, the different diseases are there which are causing the losses to the rapeseed mustard crop. Among them, the white rust and sclerotinia stem road is, are the major one which is causing up to 40 to 60 percent losses are there. Many diseases are there which are uh, many times they are uh, given appearance kind of very low incidence but many times this year many diseases which are in the uh, Punjab and Ganganagar area they are giving the kind of root road diseases were there which uh, causes the heavy losses in epiphytic conditions. Sir regarding white rust we know as we know the white rust symptoms are there and a uh, uh, number of studies have conducted regarding this and we are in a uh, very good approach to manage the uh, white rust uh, along with the downy mildew that is caused by the Hyloperanospora parasitica. The mixed infection is there and uh, the different cultural con controls kind of uh, we modified the date of sowing, use of balanced fertilizer, use of seed for staggered free crops, kind of sanitation, avoid irrigation, seed treatment with metalaxyl. These we already have recommended and the farmers, they are using this one. Now we have developed and registered the some of uh, good germplasm for the white resistance from only from the, these are the from DRMR where we have uh, succeed in the resistance in the white rust disease. Now the progress which we have made the resistance breeding program in white rust, the marker assisted selection or colleagues, they are working in the CRP platform and developed this year only three nils, uh, which is from the DU that was the in Rohini, just they have Dr. Vivi Singh and told about that one. And so far two loci of white rust resistance have been mapped uh, and two Eastern European lines here and Don Skaja with uh, white rust resistance linked markers we have identified and respectively which, uh, which uh, are using in the breeding programs. These markers are being used for the development of uh, white resistance varieties through marker resistance selection. And uh, very recently in 2020, the paper of genetics of white resistance has been published from the DRMR. Recently, a third resistance gene, uh, that is the BGA046215, have been characterized in Brassica gensia. So we are in the position that uh, number of varieties will be in the coming years will be, will be with the white resistance. Now the major problem is the sclerotinia stem rot, and as we know that uh, during last 
10 12 years it's become a havoc to the farmers these are some farmers uh, photographs where the 100% losses are with the sclerotinia stem rod these are the symptoms which caused by the sclerotinia on the leaves on the stem even on the ground surface on pods and the formation of sclerotia forecasting models very early we have developed and now farmers we are giving them well after validation we are telling them the best time when they can use the fungicides or use the trichoderma for control of the sclerotinia root cultural management is one of the important thing in the sclerotinia and the plant spacing 30 by 2 now we have improved that one by 45 into 20 that will give the low incidence of the disease and irrigation management one of the important thing where that no irrigation during the 25th december to 15 january is one of the uh, kind of a technique that farmers can use and easily manage if there is no winter rains are there and uh, regarding the this seed uh, rate regarding seed rate the mustard prototype of the seeder is developed which is very much effective in the uh, spacing of the uh, planting that is 45 into 20 centimeter some mechanical controls already we have developed and recommended to the farmers then chemical control earlier we are using the carbon regime 2 gram per liter of water now trichoderma we have evaluated and recommended 10 gram per kg of water and uh, very recently we also tested tebuconazole 1 ml per liter of water is also effective in the management of the sclerotinia road now through acrp we have developed the idm module where seed treatment with trichoderma soil application of trichoderma zinc sulfate sulfur boron line sowing no irrigation this was a kind of a package we have developed and farmers which are using this package they are uh, very low incidence of sclerotinia road they have observed some fungicides new fungicides as i have told you that uh, for sclerotinia road now we recommended propaconazole also followed by carbon regime then uh, tebuconazole i have already told you that tebuconazole also effective in the management sir regarding the development of sclerotinia resistance first we stem inoculation standardize the technique and without uh, injury we have screened the plants with uh, that was published in the very impact uh, journal that uh, technique is for three brassica germ plant this year only we have developed and registered with the nbpgr one from the drmr that is rh1 triple two two eight this is having the high tolerance then brassica nepos and brassica carinata two germ plants from the nipb sir very recently other kind of uh, our co-workers which are working in sclerotinia road they have uh, studied the, about the different types of uh, genetic diversity this was published in the frontiers where uh, gupta et al they have discussed about the 65 geographical isolates which are maintained at the drmr and genome sequencing of the bharatpur isolate we have done and uh, this uh, recently published in the scientific reports uh, with high impact and uh, uh, after taking this uh, ESR01, that is the Bharatpur isolate, we are able to know that how much virulence is there and how we can go for the kind of uh, molecular aspects of the sclerotinia storm load. Uh, but sir, I have told you that uh, we, we just their presentation that uh, Rana et al. They have shown that uh, Brassica fruticolosa, we have also screened 13 uh, wild crucifers and we found that uh, Brassica fruticulosa was the tolerant one to the sclerotinia road. But uh, this paper was published by Rana et al. in 2017 where they used these wild crucifers. Now we are sir, using the one of our Indo-Australia China germ plants was there, Chinese germ plant that was uh, 579328. It was having the tolerance at that time. So we cross it with the RS749 and now it is in the F6 population with 256 plants with the recombinant inbred lines uh, which are in progress. Regarding alternative blight, sir, uh, still we are not having only Ipridion. We are having that uh, recommended for the control of the sclerotinia road. Uh, not uh, sorry, sir, it's for uh, alternaria. But uh, uh, earlier we have also reported PHR2, PAB9511, PAB, different germ plants were there from Junsia, Carinita, and Nepas, which are tolerant to the sclerotinia road. Some of uh, wild crucifers also reported to be tolerant to the alternaria. But still, we have to use them for the, for the breeding programs. And in, in absence of the alternate resistance in Brassica Genesia lines, some of the uh, uh, Scenepis alba and uh, Irika sativa also incorporate in the breeding programs. And some publications were there. Still, we are waiting for in the field trials of the alternate resistance sources. In powdery mildew, sir, it is uh, the disease in the Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana, Maharashtra, where the temperature is very early rising and uh, losses are up to 70%, but still we are using the wettable sulfur and the dinocap. In some of advances, some lines uh, or, or colleague from the Wellington, uh, Dr. Jain reported some germ plasma which are tolerant to powdery mildew. We have to 
use them for the breeding programs and see that uh, what kind of uh, results will be there in the field condition. So these are all about the breeding programs and uh, other advances in the disease management, but some of diseases are newly emerging, that is the root rot, which is uh, causing by the Sclerosium rolfesi and it is from the groundnut where the ticker uh, sorry root rot collar rot was there in the groundnut so that is also seen many times in the farmers field another is the bacterial stock rot irvinia keratovora and this is a bacterial disease and uh, many times after two three years it is appearing every year after uh, repetition and uh, this is only due to the uh, high use of uh, nitrogenous fertilizer and the flood irrigation is the cause Damping of one of the diseases using that seed treatment with apron, fusarium wilt, minor diseases using the trichoderma, bacterial load that is the genthomonas. We are and it is also using with the copper oxychloride or streptocycline. We can use to manage that. Then club root is the only we are not having still any chemical. We have to use only lime amendment is there, and it is a major problem in the West Bengal, Assam, and the kind of Nilgiri hills. So mosaics are there and these are the vectors from the insects. So it's a very rare in the mustard, but uh, many times one or two plants have seen in the field. So it's a not a major problem. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Pankaj, for overview of the Brevsikar disease and its management. Uh, this year, because of the high temperature, a lot of, you know, farmers, uh, I was looking at the problem of wilting of the plants. Yeah and uh, at the time of uh, first irrigation normally it happens so uh, we should uh, and we need to educate the farmers about the use of uh, micro irrigation in brassica rather than using the flood method of irrigation sir, that is causing harm uh, in many places sir in micro irrigation uh, regarding that uh, earlier we have also done the experiments with the sprinkler mm. and drip irrigation mm. sir, at that time but now in the area of Alwar where the sprinkler they are using, where the white rust incidence is more. Mm. So we have to give the awareness to farmers that the, if they are having the plenty of water, they should not use the sprinkler during the pod formation or during the, at the time of maturity. Yeah, that is the mustard doesn't require too much water. It requires a systematic planning. And that is why if we know it's a proper management, we can harness its potential. Otherwise, one or the other problem may occur. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dr. Shankar. The last presentation of this evening is from Dr. H. Sarma, Principal Scientist, ICR, DMR, Bharatpur, Technology Assessment and Dissemination in the Seed and Mustard. Over to Dr. Sarma in brief. Oral presentation, they must be ready. <coughs> Uh, thank you, sir, and uh, honorable chairman, co-chairman, and the dignitaries of the hall. Uh, I am here once again for a presentation of technology assessment dissemination of the Epstein Master Program of uh, ICAR DRMR. And uh, we all know though what is the technology. Technology involves the applications of science and knowledge to practical use, enabling men to live more comfortably and securely. And uh, every technology has the two components. Uh, one is hardware technology and software technology. And uh, if you see what is hardware technology, then it comes the material or physical aspect like seed, fertilizer, sites, pesticides, like that one. And uh, how to use them. So we need the some information base that is uh, comes under the software technology. So in the context of agriculture, if we see technology means all forms of new farm inputs, practices, information, research findings and uh, services such as fertilizer, insecticide, herbicide, improved farm implements, agriculture extensions and services, etc. So all comes under the uh, technology in terms uh, of agriculture. So if we see uh, the ripseed mustard technology, so you can see in case of inputs like a physical technology, we have the seed, fertilizer, fungicides, insecticide, herbicides, and varieties. We have developed uh, about uh, 300 uh, varieties of ripseed mustard. However, only 50 varieties are in the seed chain. And when we see the agronomic practices, then uh, sowing time, application of fertilizer, weed management, irrigation management, thinning, weeding, harvesting, all comes under the economic practices. Likewise, identification of disease paste and their management, use of extension methods, media, and all type of agriculture machineries uh, are also available. 
uh, as a technology for rapeseed mustard. And uh, now our duty to uh, <clears throat> that the technology should be reached timely to the farmers. And uh, although as a research institute, we have uh, our limitation for technology dissemination programs, but uh, with uh, our all resources, we are doing our best uh, to reach to the maximum farmer through organizing a different uh, kind of programs and the schemes. So uh, one question is uh, the assess technology assessment. So sir, we must keep in mind uh, while we are developing the technologies and uh, earlier uh, my all colleagues presented the number of technology. So these are the some criteria where farmer assessed our technology. If a particular technology, whether it is varieties or an information, if it has a relative advantage than the existing technology, so more relative advantage, then there is a more chance of adoption and more compatibility with the existing resources, existing capacity. So then there is a more chance of adoption. Likewise, observability, trial ability, even a technology, if can be tested on a small scale level, then there is a chance of more adoption. And the predict predictability, if uh, we are able to predict the clearly how much gain <coughs> we can <coughs> have after the harvesting, then there is a chance of productivity. Then complexity is the negatively associated with the rate of adoption. More complex of the technology in use, whether it may be due to the lack of machinery, due to the lack of labor, due to the lack of resources. So relative advantage, trialability, predictability, compatibility, observability, all has the positive <laughs> attributes and the positive correlation with the rate of adoption. Complexity has the negative cor correlation. So what is the, the need? Need is to whatever technology we have, they should be communicated to the farmers. And uh, uh, the, the dissemination is simply a process of spreading and communication of technology to the ultimate users. And uh, we use a one term diffusion. Diffusion is just like a dissemination or transfer technology. But when communication is related to the new uh, technology or an innovation, then be termed as a diffusion. And adoption, we must keep in mind, adoption is not simply uh, just an impulse decision, just farmers hear about a technology and uh, he just uh, adopt them. It is a decision making process, mental process. And after a long sequence of thoughts and actions, farmers decide whether to use or not uh, to use as per his existing situations. So. <clears throat> Now, if we see what are the technology dissemination programs of our institute. So, sir, we, we categorize into traditional uh, programs and ICT based and electronic media program. So, we are trying to use all the programs, all the methodologies uh, for reaching the farmers because farmers are of different kinds. Uh, some farmers are educated. We can uh, put them in an uh, innovator. Some are early adopt adopter or some are a late majority and like that. So, our object to it, we should reach to everyone. So we are organizing frontline demonstration program, trainings, exhibitions, farmer fair, Kisan Goshti, Parame schools, field age, visitor advice services, distribution literature, and uh, more other program. And uh, another ICT based electronic media. So I am thankful to our professor Arvind Kumar sir. I am remembering uh, that 2004 when this uh, special program was launched uh, with uh, one AIR station of so Agra in Uttar Pradesh, sir encouraged us and guided us. And uh, since then, sir, we are continuing with this program and it is very popular program. And now we are uh, disseminating our Sarso Shiksha program with 10 uh, All India Radio stations. And I am thankful to sir, uh, Dr. Rai sir also. Okay, this uh, for last two years, we are uh, launching a Sarso Shiksha program with DD Kisan also, so that they can, we can reach to the maximum number of farmers. Then uh, we are using social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and we have developed some management information software also, uh, so that uh, we have not left any stone unturned for technology dissemination program at our institute level. And if you see the data of only last year, uh, so uh, from organizing these programs, sir, there were uh, more than 8,000 uh, primary beneficiaries and more than 50,000 were secondary beneficiaries who got the benefit from this program. And through Radio Krishna Shiksha program, the <laughs> listeners were from Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and DD Kisan IT based program, it covers the whole country. These are some of the our programs uh, like FLDH, you can see the in photographs. Then Field Day, we organized our honorable RSC members also uh, visited last year. 
and uh, like what uh, number of training programs uh, not only for farmers but extension personnel and all stakeholders uh, we have been organizing uh, these are some of the glimpses of our training program uh, then uh, one another uh, <clears throat> methodology at sarso farm schools uh, we have been regularly organizing uh, at the farm field then uh, we are organizing the exhibitions at different places and different uh, uh, occasions then we have uh, advisory uh, visitors advisory services a number of farmers uh, visit number of extension personnel visit is sponsored by department or some fpo or private agencies uh, we are providing technical advisory to them and uh, regularly publishing technical folders bulletins for uh, distributions of the farmer and uh, this is the uh, last year we covered uh, through 10 ai stations some of the glimpses and this is another popular program in view of the uh, use of uh, mobile phones and video <clears throat> also. So this is another uh, our popular program. Then we have on Facebook page regularly providing information at, uh, <clears throat> to the, our users. And uh, YouTube channels are also uh, we are using. And uh, uh, we have, uh, sir, <clears throat> Our uh, computer scientist uh, did uh, excellent work for developing in the rapeseed master research and production information management. We have a good website containing all information of so, uh, uh, not only production technology, but all kind of information, then rapeseed master information <coughs> system, fertilizer application recommendation manager, aphid warning system, rapeseed master digital portal library, publication information system, rapeseed master disease management system, germ plage information system, all type of softwares. Uh, we have developed and uh, anyone can take the information by using uh, these and our link is available on our website and uh, sir beside this uh, we have some flagship program you all know Miragao Miragoro uh, and uh, schedule type component NH component schedule cast component through these program we are organized the uh, crop demonstration frontline demonstrations trainings and uh, ghosties and uh, number of farmers got benefited from these program so these are some of the glimpses of uh, this Miragao Miragao schedule tribe component, which is being implemented in Jharkhand, uh, uh, 7 KBK and uh, Atari, uh, Patna. Likewise, schedule tribe component program, we are uh, implementing in the different districts, different states, NEH component we are doing in Northeast region, schedule cast component. And we have uh, linkages with the uh, private sector and IPO so that uh, we can reach to number of groups uh, of the farmers. And uh, another flexible program already our honorable director has presented, Dr. Rajarika sir presented what we are doing in Assam. Uh, these are some of the glimpses. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sarma, for a nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, now we uh, come to an end uh, uh, about this, uh, you know, brief presentations by Dr. B.B. Singh, Dr. H.K. Sarma, Dr. Jad, Dr. Pankaj Sarma, and Dr. A.K. Sarma. And if you have any query or question out of these uh, five presentations, you may like to raise at this point of time. Any query? People are available here. So if not, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sarma, for an excellent uh, extension strategy. Thank you. And a lot of efforts for uh, carrying forward the masses technology gap is to be filled up and it is being filled up. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Uh, now we have rapid uh, oral PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, four hands. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we have now four rapid uh, presentation. Uh, one is uh, wide hybridization in rapeseed mustard by Arun Kumar, HS Meena, BL Meena, Hariyom Sarma, Rima Rani, Prasant Yadav, B.B. Singh and P.K. Rai. Who shall be presenting? Okay. Arun Kumar. Wide hybridization in rapeseed mustard. You have only five minutes. Not more than five minutes. It's a... Next should be ready. ICBO ES294. And after that, 311. After that, 115. So these are the only four, five minutes each.
आप पहले से ही फीड कर दीजिए क्योंकि इसमें टाइम फिर वेस्ट होता है वे क्विक रिस्पेक्टेड चेयरमैन सर डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर अरविंद कुमार जी माय डायरेक्टर सर प्रोफेसर सर एस सी शर्मा जी एंड माय कॉलीग्स एंड डिस्टिंग डेलीगेट्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन वाइड हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑन रेपशीड मस्टर्ड दो इट इज वेरी वाइड टॉपिक बट डॉक्टर आवर सर हैज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन इन ड्यूरिंग द प्री बीडिंग टॉक दैट हाउ द वाइड हाइब्रेशन एंड एवरीथिंग कैन बी हैज बीन डिस्कस इन डिटेल्स so i will be going very brief some facts in the are there it is do it is uh, directly or indirectly <clears throat> variety uh, this varuna is involved with crossing program and development of various uh, breeding programs and various varieties have been developed and it has been involved about 42% so like these other varieties uh, mostly krishna kranti krishna rohini urvashi and all these are have been uh, there so directly or indirectly uh, this varuna has been contributed more than 42% and uh, other varieties such as uh, uh, kranti and other varieties which are included in the uh, are used in hybridization program uh, these uh, are about 40 22% due to this uh, there is a narrow line of uh, narrow gene pool in the Uh, for further improvement of brassica program and this also lead to the narrowing of the uh, genetic variability uh, therefore so there are many uh, some studies that is use of wild species for, for desirable traits etc and we are uh, then broadening the genetic base during the resynthesis resurfacing of plant sites like this there are several uh, studies are available so i will be doing uh, and uh, briefly talking about this wide hybridizations since already it is already discussed that that uh, the there are pre and post barriers are available are there due to this uh, this wide hybridization is cannot be easily obtained so there this must be uh, first barriers should be removed or develop methods should be do and breeders have been uh, developing this uh, trying to the, develop the various uh, uh, wide uh, crosses and this is the virasca you know, genomic evolution and this is the uh, desirable wild genome plus various species more than about 100 species are available for various characters and in below table shows some of the uh, species which i have utilized in the recent years for the development of this uh, uh, wide hybrid rates for genetic uh, genet widening the genetic pool and diversification of the uh, this brassica crop uh, hand emasculation is very uh, is very useful in this brassica species for hybridization uh, in this is the interspecies cross between this carinata and uh, gensia and cytologically also proven morphological cytological everything has been completed this is the f2 variability showing you can see the, through the pictures and after uh, uh, and after in the net sum of this uh, total hybridization was that uh, short duration less than 127 days low height and uh, high yield content one genetic stock has been registered with the uh, npvgr in during 1920 next uh, which i have used this 24 type which is known for drought and other various uh, disease content i have this, this is crossed with the rafa and uh, uh, cytological and marker markers but also used for true with hybridity and uh, during this uh, Two, two, three, and uh, about twenty-six new types have been identified, which are um, they are very uh, showing very uh, variability in terms of this uh, height, plant, and everything. And and uh, in in after nine generation, we I have tried to uh, still find out the hybridity uh, and through markers, uh, assess our marker, and three to four genotypes are have been identified. And next, uh, this Prasca fruti colosa, which is Uh, known to be tolerant to aphid and uh, uh, condi natural conditions, in which uh, in this what I have tried this uh, uh, I have into do colchicin chromosome development and I have converted into colchicin output tetraploid. Then it was utilized in the hybridization in the Brassica uh, gensia. 
and three process has been obtained, and namely uh, Rohini and Proticlose, uh, Varuna and Lakshmi varieties. And all the cytological and everything has been done. And uh, marker uh, and hybridity was proved. And after, uh, and now this uh, derived lines and uh, advanced lines, uh, which have been uh, firstly identified, screened at Pio Ludhiana. Now I'm screening this line set, a uh, hotspot at uh, SK Nagar. And uh, two to three, you know, types or lines are been identified. And this is this is a view picture view. You can see the uh, uh, tolerant lines at uh, SK Nagar last year photograph. At Bhar and these lines at Bharatpur are showing only one or two single plants are showing the uh, and affinity infestations, not full line or everything is available. Since uh, in uh, at Bharatpur condition, affinity infestation is not as compared to uh, SK Nagar. And other crosses are also I am trying to show generate variability through interspecific crosses to for diversification of this gene pool. And uh, you can see some apparatus and dominant type gold seeded variety are been uh, are there. Uh, so in the end, I would like to conclude that wide evolution can provide materials that are useful for both developing practical breeding strategies and for studying genetic effect of the individual crop on a particular trade. This includes estimating number of genes that control the linkage map. Using this knowledge, genetic improvement of the Rasiga can be further enhanced. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. The next uh, presentation is uh, from uh, Amita Singh, Rakesh Chaudhary, Chitit Gupta, Ansuman Singh, SK Chaturvedi, Vijay Kumar Yadav. Marpo Physiological Diversity of Indian Mustard, uh, Germ Plan for Terminal Heat Tolerance. Dr. Rakesh Chaudhary will present. Just in brief, uh, you can leave the introductory part. Okay. Good evening, respected chairman, sir. Professor Arvind Kumar, sir, uh, co-chairman, sir, Dr. P.K. Rai, sir, and uh, senior Dr. H.C. Sarma, sir, S.R. Bhatt, sir, and other senior uh, researcher in Mustard Group, and my dear uh, my friends. So here I am presenting the morphophysiological diversity in Indian mustard germ plus for terminal heat tolerance. I am escaping the introductory part. It has been already covered. But uh, we can see the productivity gap in the Bundelkhand region. So if we will compare it with the Indian productivity, the national productivity and UP and Bundelkhand. So in the UP, the area-wise, it is having the second highest, but productivity is less and the product, it stands fourth in the product. But in, uh, if we will take the average of Bundelkhand region, that consists of uh, seven districts from the MP, seven districts from the UP. So the average of the last five years, the productivity is only 860 kg per hectare. So that is a very huge gap. So the reasons behind that is generally the predominantly it is grown on the rainfed cultivation and poor and marginal soil status, delayed sowing after the groundnut, poor SRR, VRR, and gaps in technology adoption. If we will compare the Bundelkhand and Jhansi district, the productivity. So after the inception of university, we can see that the continuous increase in the productivity in the Jhansi as well as in the Bundelkhand. But except in 2018-19, the productivity of Bundelkhand is uh, quite low due to the environment. But uh, due to demonstration and impact of the seed hub, we can see that continuously the productivity is increasing in the Jhansi district. So these are the best. Uh, the delayed sowing is a major problem in Bundelkhand and the, at the time of harvesting reproductive stage, the temperature is too high. So the productivity is uh, hampered. So here we have conducted an experiment uh, by using 200 germplasm in the augmented block design. And we have done the sowing in normal zone and the late zone condition. So here the temperature drop is not visible. So with that, in the mark, the temperature is too high and it uh, reaches to the 40, uh, 40 degrees centigrade. And then we uh, analyzed the genotype and we found that the uh, nine genotypes we found uh, promising for this and the major impact was on the number of secondary branches has been reduced in the late zone condition, uh, leap area index has been reduced and 
thousand seed weight and the seeds per silicua. It has been also be reduced by the heat tolerance and the yield reduction was the fifty point three six percent in the overall mean. So this we found, based on the heat stability index and yield stability index, we found that these were the promising genotypes. Uh, I acknowledge also ICR DRMR uh, who have provided uh, these genotypes. And some we have procured from the NBPGR. So these were the genotypes, and NDRE4 recorded the minimum heat stability index. And uh, in case of the, it also given the highest yield stability index. So we have grouped these genotypes based on the cluster analysis, and we found that all nine genotypes are found in different clusters. So we can make use; they are having the diversity in that, and we can make use of in the crossing program. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rakesh. Thank, Thank you. you. Mundel Khand, there is a lot of, uh, you know, progress because of the seed hub and again because of the improved varieties, particularly a lot of demand of this Giriraj is there in that particular region. Uh, the next is uh, Umesh MR, Gurbir Singh, Krishna Reddy, Gurpreet Kaur, Bupendra Singh and Srinivas P. Growth and physiological response of canola to interactive effect of temperature, moisture, and nitrogen stress under controlled environment. Who is going to present? I am present. Okay. Mr. Umesh. Okay. So, respected chairman, co-chairman, and the mustard group and the fellow scientists. I'm here to present uh, some of the brief results of a growth and physiological response of canola with uh, influenced by the, the different day and night temperature, moisture and nutrient status under a controlled environment. So as we know, canola is uh, uh, famous or uh, like major uh, the cool season crops, majorly grown in Canada and like USA and Australia because it has like uh, the, the, the fat content is really good as compared to other uh, the uh, major oil seed crops because it contains only 6% saturated and remaining 94% uh, is uh, good uh, fully unsaturated uh, the fat. Then uh, canola, we know it is uh, Canadian oil, uh, low acid. Why it is uh, imported in those areas means uh, it is grown in two parts. One is in uh, winter canola or fall season canola and another one is uh, spring canola. Uh, we conducted this particular uh, experiment to know the high temperature you know, influence on the, the, the canopy characters, root characters, and the photosynthetic behavior of uh, the canola crop. And uh, we also tested the moisture stress effect, nitrogen stress effect on the canopy and root characters. The, ob the, the, the major objective of our uh, the study is uh, the impact of high temperature, day and night temperature, moisture and nitrogen stresses on canopy and the root characters under controlled environment and assess impact of multiple stresses and photosynthetic behavior of uh, the canola under controlled environment. So we conducted this experiment in USDA lab at uh, Mississippi State. Uh, it is uh, the, for this training program, uh, the, it is funded by ICR in AHP program. Uh, I visited in uh, March 2022 and completed in May end. And this particular experiment went, was planted in 7th April and uh, completed on 15th May. It is uh, like 40 days uh, old, uh, the 40 days old crop we harvested for, to uh, know the impact. And the variety we selected is Roundup. And the treatment details, major treatment details is uh, 35, 18 means uh, the day temperature is 35. And uh, another one treatment is 27. And another one is 20. So three day and night temperature variation and moisture stress, uh, the well watered and uh, drought stress. And another treatment, another factor is nitrogen at the rate of 120 kg and uh, compare with uh, no nitrogen. And we conducted in the CRD. So these uh, each uh, part connected with the soil moisture sensors to know the moisture status. And also we conducted uh, the ambient CO2 and daylight uh, is uniform across all the growth chambers. And we maintained uh, the night temperature 18 degree in uh, all the treatments only in like uh, uh, eight hours from uh, on, uh, so six to six, we changed the temperature gradient band uh, to stabilize the growth chambers at the early morning, two hours, we maintained uh, gradually increasing the temperature. But during the uh, rest of the uh, daytime, it is maintained at 35, 27 and 20 in the separate growth chambers. 
and uh, the results are showing that uh, the all almost all the canopy characters including the leaves per plant leaf area chlorophyll content then uh, leaf thickness are significantly influenced by the temperature as well as moisture stress and the nitrogen status and uh, some of the uh, the canopy characters in terms of dry weight leaves dry weight root dry weight total and uh, the comparison between the shoot and root ratio and the nitrogen uptake by the individual plant is also varies uh, like by the temperature day and night temperature and the moisture stress and the nitrogen and uh, we also studied the the photosynthetic response of uh, uh, the canola crop under a uh, different uh, treatments including the day and night temperature nitrogen and the water stress almost all the treatments showing the the photosynthetic response at a different light levels similarly we also uh, can uh, estimated the co2 response curve under different treatments temperature stress nitrogen stress and water stress it is also showing uh, some uh, the significant difference among the treatments and the analysis of variance of uh, different uh, the canopy characters as well as root characters also showing uh, the influence by day and night temperature nitrogen and the moisture stress then finally i conclude my the results uh, it is biomass accumulation in leaves as well as roots is significantly influenced by day and night temperature it was greater at optimum temperature of 2718 and uh, it is significantly affected by day temperature highest at 35 and lowest at the 20 then canola uh, needs sufficient moisture and nutrient for early vegetative stage we sell uh, like grown up to 40 days so that's why it needs some sufficient moisture and the nitrogen and it also light response and uh, the co2 response curves also greatly influenced by uh, all the three uh, factors and you can see the the difference in the the plant uh, growth at a different uh, uh, the temperature and also you can see the root characteristics of uh, different the moisture stress uh, individual uh, the part we uh, separated the roots thank you sir thank you thank you dr ramesh you got an opportunity under nhep project this is yes yes sir. this is good and that's what we wanted that people should go and learn over there and gain a confidence so thank you for the good work you have undertaken over there there definitely there is a impact of day and night temperature on brassica correct sir. especially uh, next, next presentation is uh, by dr navin c gupta from national institute Institute of Plant Biotechnology. Topic is not given to me, so you can indicate your topic. respected chair co chair uh, jury members distinguished delegates good evening all of you uh, this is one of the component uh, on which i am working to understand the sclerodonia sclerodorum and brassica pathosystem so this is the metabolomic component and uh, in this aspect we are trying to analyze and study the secondary metabolites analysis in the broad host range plant pathogenic fungus sclerodonia sclerodorum which is causing the stemmed or disease in basica so uh, as we know uh, this is a soil born ascomycete fungus which is having the hemibiotic mode of infection to the uh, brassica and as it is known it is infecting more than 400 plant species which is belonging to 278 genera and 75 families and uh, it causes stemmed or disease and affects seed yield as well as the quality of the soil in the affected crops and the measurement is very difficult because of the heavy biotropic mode of infection where this particular pathogen is uh, firstly initiate up to 16 hour the biotropic mode of infection after that it is following the necrotrophic mode of infection and it is having the wind dispersal of the spores which is generated in the field as well as it is having the carpogenic mode of infection to the plant so that's why the infection it is being very devastating in the favorite conditions which is mid december to mid january and it is having the longer persistence in the soils because of the persistent escler uh, escler escleroturum in the field 
So as we have the Pan India collection of the Escalatoria uh, Escalatorium germplasm, so that's why we have selected uh, two isolates from each of the category that was the high, uh, highly virulent, virulent, and moderately virulent, so that we can analyze what is the different secondary metabolites being secreted under the exogenic conditions by these different three categories of this fungus, and then with the uh, this is the chromatogram of the three uh, six different isolates which. Uh, uh, was depicted and then these chromatograms the major peaks were analyzed and then based on the adduct addition as well as the subtraction of the adducts into the identified uh, chemical compounds we have analyzed and identified 10 different metabolites which is being secreted by this pathogen and out of these 10 metabolites the uh, six uh, metabolites which is being reported for the first time which is uh, being secreted by Escleritonia escleritorum under the genetic conditions, out of which five were already known from the different botrytis scenario fungus. So based on these metabolites identified, we have also tried to correlate the phylogenetic analysis of these selected metabolites, uh, uh, selected Escleritonia isolates. And we have identified that if we are trying to phylogenetically categorize these isolates based on the secondary metabolites, then it is having difference from the what we have studied based on their virulence as well as their geographical origin. So that uh, categorization is very different as we can uh, see here in the uh, uh, tree that uh, the highly virulent isolate, it is going along with this uh, virulent strain as well as the moderately virulent, it is going with the highly virulent. So that's why the categorization based on the secondary metabolites, it is far different from the virulence as well as the geographical uh, differences. Apart from this, we have recently published the draft genome sequencing of Esplutonia Esplutonum and that genome sequence were also analyzed to identify the different genomic uh, regions which is being uh, uh, expressing this uh, gene cluster, which is involved in secondary metabolite biosynthesis. And with this genome-wide analysis, we have identified 15 genomic region uh, among the 328 scaffold of the Escultonia Escultorum ESR01 genome, that 15 gene uh, means genomic clusters, it was uh, uh, means uh, uh, involved into the secondary metabolite biosynthesis out of which five were in, involved in polycatide biosynthesis, and uh, nine uh, genomic region, it was dedicated to non-ribosomal peptide biosynthesis and one genomic region, it was involved into the terpene biosynthesis. So among these all, uh, the three different uh, uh, means genomic regions, which is involved in botanic acid biosynthesis, naphthalene, as well as esqualistatin uh, biosynthesis. So there are different uh, genes particularly involved into these uh, genomic clusters. So those gene is, has been already uh, under a study so that we can identify the virulence factor. So we can, uh, I can summarize my work and achievement with these things that six, uh, so, uh, six secondary metabolites, that is uh, uh, glenon escleron, escleritinine, melanin, escleritin. So these are already known uh, uh, metabolites, but six uh, glioverine, escleramide, borsinic acid, bustriquidine, and borsinine. So these are the uh, first time we have reported from this metabolite studies and yes. thank you thank you dr thank you, navin gupta for an excellent work i think this is a very good work which will certainly move uh, towards uh, solving the problem of alternative light at least more knowledge more information is given so you have taken this undertaken this basic work and which is very good uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us this information so let me conclude uh, today's session. Uh, in fact, uh, at the uh, first, uh, I would talk that the presentations made by each and everyone, about 12 presentations have been very useful, knowledgeable. Everybody made uh, excellent presentation. And I will request that uh, if the presentations are uh, given in a CD form to each and everyone or uh, uh, loaded in the website so that each and every Brassica scientist is able to again go through these presentations because time may not permit uh, to go through in a, such a lengthy, uh, you know, aspects. But certainly when it is on website or it is given uh, through, uh, you know, a pen drive or any suitable mode, 
that will be very helpful to brashika workers throughout the country uh, the key aspects 1 2 3 4 5 i will like to spell which have emerged out of this the the first one is about the temperature in fact uh, early uh, and late both heat tolerance is required because normally mustard has got a problem when it is uh, planted under high temperature situations toria can germinate but mustard not so this need to be looked out and both early and late heat tolerance mechanism need to be worked out and varieties need to be specified for these regions second aspect is uh, about the you know which has been talked about uh, how to improve the nutrient use efficiency by addition of certain legumes or certain intercropping systems or through conservation mode of agriculture which uh, needs lot of studies need to be undertaken and educated the third aspect is about uh, taking care of sclerotinia now we have to pay more emphasis on sclerotinia which is because mustard is continuously year after year grown in the same field so sclerotinia is causing a problem so sclerotinia we have to lay more emphasis number one i would talk about we used to talk about alternaria but now we can say that sclerotinia is becoming a major problem and issue in most of the prominent uh, brassica particularly mustard growing areas then another aspect is wild hybridization which is very important particularly it has been shown for aphid resistance and use of wild species hybridization how it can be made that is also a point which need to be noted then heterosis how we can improve the you know uh, heterosis level of heterosis in uh, mustard and also some effort are needed in case of toria toria i think we had not made any effort so far uh, in mustard junsia we have made nepas we have made so we need to again look into because in northeastern part still many parts toria is an important crop and from north almost it used to be there in may toria rotation which has now completely washed away so this need to be looked into then certain measures like uh, trap crop and you know uh, the crop like uh, coriander was given an example by dr h c sharma and certain technology needs to be taken carry forward further tested and disseminated to farming community and also the extension management extension strategy i would say it's a management now how you manage the farmers it's a technique and a lot of uh, you know radio shiksha program tv program have taken place uh, this is good but still uh, many uh, you know farmers are not fully aware about the timely application of technology so a package is to be given what time they should need to do it and definitely it will make a impact in mustard in fact if uh, we delay uh, by a few days you know the, there is a problem so this need to be looked into and how to improve ultimately the seedling vigor uh, that is also a because early start the growth during the early period is good after 40 45 days brassica doesn't require much care so the whole almost agronomy is over by that time so early vigor how to attain early vigor the varieties which are giving early vigor during the early stage uh, and at the last about the yield parameters in my opinion two yield parameters of great significance one is uh, improving the seed size of course in brassica there is variability we have up to 6 gram and also we have the variability for the number of seeds per silica so these are the two important character which need to be taken to note and need to be improve, uh, included vigorously in our breeding programs and also uh, i am very happy to see the satric resistance which uh, was being talked about that uh, if we harvest late longevity may be retained but if we harvest early longevity may not be there so we have to take a point how we got longevity and storageability all these points and germinability they are taken into consideration and for that reason this is a very good work and i am sure that the presentations which have been made by various speakers and the efforts being made by bringing new technological mission on oil seeds and uh, edible oils this will certainly pave the way 
for mustard and mustard is a crop which will certainly made an impact in the country and certainly help to mitigate the stress uh, of the you know overall import of the edible oil lot of uh, huge foreign trade exchange is there i think i am not sure but it, it is somewhere 1.7 lakh crore now if i am not uh, wrong i am just reading in the news papers or in tv news because uh, these are the two sources where regularly keep us updated and some ministry information and news so this huge uh, import will we cannot sustain any more and under the aap nirbhar when we call our honorable prime minister we have to see that uh, edible oil makes an impact and certainly this conference is in a certainly make a headway in bringing out some good recommendations and a strategy particularly to suggest the governmental agency to have a mission like we had in 1986 when we attained the self sufficiency to the level of 95% in 10 years why not we can attain or if not complete sufficiency near self sufficiency definitely we can attain there is a need and will power is there government uh, support is there so this is right time we should harness this opportunity and at the at the end i thank uh, each and every one and uh, i will request uh, dr rai to uh, i mean give his concluding remarks any suggestions anything which you want to give to the audience that will be valuable so uh, i am sure that we have been late by on, only 45 50 minutes but kindly bear with us knowledge is more important every day we are eating and sleeping but uh, we are sitting together it's a rare opportunities and uh, normally during the last two years in covid we couldn't meet so uh, comfortably and peacefully so this is a peaceful environment and uh, maybe bear with us some delay may be there but definitely after this the panelist will give you also some uh, you know solutions some uh, you know messages to be uh, taken to be carry forward and that will be moderated by dr s r bhat so i request dr rai and then over to dr s r bhat thank you very much thank you all uh, thank you sir uh, uh, in fact uh, chairman has very uh, nicely summarized uh, the entire uh, presentation made uh, during this satellite uh, <coughs> this uh, conference in fact uh, nothing is to say uh, except that uh, there are the technologies available either the latest biotechnological tools are available and as uh, mentioned by uh, dr s r bhat that uh, pre breeding in fact it's the backbone of this entire breska breeding program unless until we utilize the uh, novel genotype uh, this uh, wild uh, species uh for integration of the traits uh, novel traits into the cultivated brassica because uh, because of the this uh, high yielding into high yielding crosses and like that and we have just narrowed down uh, the genetic base further so we need to broaden the genetic base and uh, one thing i would like to say at this point of time that because <clears throat> having the experience of working in this uh, entire brassica program Uh, either icrp or <coughs> rapid mustard is concerned or the uh, outreach program which uh, drmr is uh, doing a more concerted and aggressive efforts is required uh, to get the uh, optimum benefits of the uh, technologies which are available and the science which is available and uh, better <coughs> this incorporation of the science uh, biological tools for the breeding program particularly because still we are having the need for uh, some of the specific uh, type of varieties like uh, for the high temperature and then dead zone and uh, these conditions and uh, because uh, in the new niches uh, brassica cultivation is spreading uh, and uh, farmers are coming forward to adopt this cultivation of rapid mustard which is a very good thing but uh, still uh, sometimes uh, uh, recently uh, few days back we observed this uh, frost injury has caused a lot of damage in the rajasthan haryana and the delhi 
and some part of the Madhya Pradesh. So we must think over this also because once in a two or three, three, four years, uh, this, uh, this, is, this has become a regular feature. And under the climate change uh, conditions, uh, we will definitely, uh, uh, regular intervals, we will absorb such type of, uh, such type of calamities. And uh, as I have also mentioned, and Dr. Sarma has mentioned, Pankaj Sarma, that uh, suddenly one uh, minor disease has assumed a very uh, major, uh, actually uh, serious uh, uh, this form in some part of the Rajasthan. So we must look on to those uh, things uh, through uh, ourselves and through ICRP centers and all the Breska uh, researchers working uh, in different part of the country. So. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, thanks a lot for being the part of this uh, uh, satellite conference and uh, the take home message uh, very well uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar sir has uh, given points and I will uh, make sure that these points will go as a recommendations of this uh, satellite sessions of uh, this uh, very important crop and uh, I will urge again that uh, do the concerted and aggressive approach to use the technologies, to disseminate the technologies to the farmers so that they could get uh, maximum benefit uh, out of this uh, cultivation of rapeseed mustard uh, crop. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, just a minute, sir. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, sir, for conducting a nice uh, this satellite symposium. I request the chairman and co-chairman to give a moment of love to all speakers. I invite Dr. Vivi Singh. Request Dr. Hariyom Sharma. <laughs> Dr. R.S. Jat. Dr. A.K. Sharma. Myself. And uh, I request uh, Dr. P.K. Rai, sir, co-chairman, to felicitate our uh, chairman of the session. Dr. Arvind Kumar ji. Thank you very much, sir. And request uh, uh, Dr. S.R. Bhatt, sir, to take the panel discussion. Uh, 
good evening uh, we are slightly behind schedule i would request uh, that each panelist listed here uh, takes uh, maybe 3 minutes with it two two minutes with it. yeah <laughs> because because there are 10 persons listed here i hope they are all present here i'll just uh, take the name dr pk rai dr vv singh dr ak sharma dr rs jhat dr mandokar dr navin singh dr hazarika dr meena dr pankaj sharma and dr hp singh uh, i see dr navin singh is not around perhaps uh, dr hazarika i don't know whether he is still there online uh, anyway uh, uh, dr mahak Mahak Singh, yes, a new addition. Okay, uh, I would give the first opportunity to those who have not spoken so far, uh, and Dr. Mahak Singh, first. Yeah, because others have had an opportunity already. Keep this light on, please. respected chairman sir fellow delegates honorable vice former vice chancellor jansi university director p k rai sir kanpur is a very leading center 23 varieties of rape seed mustard have been developed from 1936 Up to 2022, namely Varna, Urvasi, Basanti, Maya, Kanti, Asirvat, Tapeshwari, Ajad Mahak, Ajad Chetna, and all the varieties are recommended for spe specific location, specific and agroclimatic zones. So this is the. major achievement of this kanpur center and we have produced who use amount of breeder seed in different past years and now at this time we are producing 10 varieties breeder seed at our center now we have sufficient quantity of yellow sarso breeder seed and toria varieties and rape seed mustard varieties because nowadays only two persons are working in our acrip system so we have very in human power human power very less so sorry we are not doing more as we hope thank you Uh, thank you, Dr. Mahak Singh. Can I Sir. can I make a suggestion to the panelists that you say one thing? What what's the bottleneck? First point, and second, what we should be doing in future? Please don't go into the pleasantries of uh, DC, XBC, and director. We all know each other. We are all colleagues here at Equal Science Scientist. So thank you very much. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as rightly said uh, by co-chairman and chairman, that uh, we should discuss in the panel discussion only uh, the issues uh, which are, uh, I mean, the constants which we face and the suggestions uh, what we want to give it. Uh, I am definitely. Uh, not going to cover the uh, something which is very uh, specific scientific in nature but general in nature what actually uh, as a person who who has been uh, 
looking after the interest of the corruption uh, mustard. Uh, so there are three issues. Uh, there are three uh, constraints: productivity, uh, marketing, and uh, processing. So if you go to uh, 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 productivity, uh, there are uh, issues which I will just pinpoint only: availability of seed, availability of labor, machine, and uh, showing uh, at showing time unavailable weather conditions available to the farmers, knowledge of recommended seed rate, knowledge of insecticides, pesticide, and their uh, doses, adoption of plant protection uh, uh, system. Um, and then let us come to the marketing constraints, the storage facilities at farmhouses, uh, lack of marketing uh, news, uh, more transportation charges, knowledge of uh, Monday charges, Unfor unfavorable and unstable uh, product price, uh, including MSP, then processing constants, financial problems, transport problems, electricity problem, storage problem, labor problem, availability of raw uh, materials, ma management problem, and then problem in uh, processing uh, at large. Then uh, the some of the suggestions which are very general in nature, but I would like to convey it to here so that uh, if it can be included in the uh, uh, in the uh, the final recommendations. And the first one is the emphasis on uh, sp uh, special attention to small farmers, uh, encouragement for the use of modern uh, technology on their farm, uh, importance to be given to involve uh, extension workers uh, for uh, for proper use of modern technology throughout the year on farm uh, fields. Provision uh, should be made to avoid power cut, especially during the peak season. More uh, lenient outlook uh, should be uh, uh, adopted by the government for providing license for the, uh, uh, for the entrepreneurs for rapeseed processes, mills, and adequate uh, credit facilities. Technological advancement for improving the recovery of uh, percentage of oil, encouraging to build scientific storage while granting, uh, uh, while granting license to processing mills, testing labs for quality assessment needs to be encouraged. Transportation is another constant who is, uh, which is to be provided, uh, which is to be uh, improved by farming uh, uh, cooperative societies, something like that. These are my, some of my uh, pinpoints, which I uh, thought I would like to share with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Bhatt, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Kumar. Uh, uh, so uh, with respect to the time constraint, I will directly go to the constraint. And uh, what I've seen from the presentation is we're talking about the technology. Dr. Bhatt has talked about QTLs and mapping, all those stuff. But I think technology has moved far away from these QTLs. And one of the technology for genetic gain improvement is genomic selection. And this is the need of our now. And what I feel is in mustard, we have not used this technology and there is a tremendous opportunity for using the technology. That is one thing. Uh, many times I had public public relationship. I coming from private sector now, I, I was part of ICR. I know ICR and uh, uh, private sector, but there is no exchange of journalism. When you talk about journalism, people are skeptical. We are private people, we don't want to share. But I think there is a win-win situation. We probably need journalism, but we can provide the technology. Companies are very advanced in, in terms of technology, in terms of genomic selection, genome association mapping, and all those complex traits. So those technologies and those capabilities we have at Corteva and most of the multinational companies. So what I feel the time, the, the, the need is, then let us have this collaboration with public partner partnership, public private partnership, and if you can exchange those journalism, technologies, idea, I think we can make great success. Uh, that's my submission. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to put forward
two points. One, uh, there is a great opportunity uh, in the eastern, northeastern region. Uh, and uh, those regions can pay, <coughs> play a very vital role in bringing again the grid, <coughs> this yellow revolution. And the uh, major bottleneck which we are facing, uh, that is the lack of Indian mustard varieties, uh, which is maturing about in 100 days, plus minus five days. Uh, because uh, there we are uh, experiencing in the program that uh, Indian mustard varieties are giving uh, much higher yield as compared to the Toria. Of course, uh, Toria should not be neglected and uh, we are <laughs> doing on that uh, Toria crop under a <laughs> All India Coordinated Research Program. But the Indian mustard varieties, if it is uh, maturing in 100 days, and giving uh, the yield up to two tons, which is quite possible. Uh, 17 quintal, 18 quintal varieties we are having, uh, maturing in 110 uh, uh, days. So uh, that is one point and uh, uh, which uh, need to be taken care. And uh, second thing is that in the traditional areas, what uh, we have analyzed uh, at district level, we found that uh, there is gap, a, lot, a big gap and a micro level planning is required, particularly in traditional areas where rapeseed mustard is grown at larger areas. And uh, this technology uh, is not reaching up to the farmers. So as I said earlier, that uh, there is a need to uh, some aggressive efforts, concentrated effort to bring the technology to the farmers so that they can take the advantage of uh, the technologies which are available and which are giving uh, the higher yield under the uh, frontline demonstrations. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Now I invite Dr. V. V. Singh. Uh, good, good evening, sir. So, most of the issues and constraints, they have already been covered and the chairman, sir, nicely summarized the constraints or also the solutions. But uh, I would like to flag three most important issues. And one is heterosis in the present hybrids. And looking to the heterosis level in this workshop, uh, we have exempted uh, 10 to 5% for the promotion of the hybrids and next level of testing. So uh, we should try to uh, level up 10% over the best hybrids. But till the hybrids uh, that having the 10%, we can continue up to 5%. So this is the issue that we have to increase the heterosis level up to 10% over the best hybrid. And for this, uh, this uh, CRP hybrid program is very good program. And we are exchanging the R lines, also the A lines, and very good uh, hybrids are coming up. And in this, uh, one thing is that uh, we should constitute the trial in the next meeting, we will discuss acre meeting for the different ecological situations. Because seeing the material, we have the hybrids, they are maturing the 120 and 125 days and having the good yield levels. Also the WRR, hybrids are coming. So this is the good material. We can diversify the hybrids in different the maturity groups. That is the timely zone, also the rent fed, and also the early zone groups. So this is the one thing. And next thing is the early maturity director sir is saying, there are some centers which are mandated for the Turia breeding. But if you see the last 10 years results, only one or two entries they have promoted to the next level of testing. So this is a very worrisome situation. We have to strengthen the work of the Toria also. Okay, we, we can continue the mustard breeding, but Toria should not be replaced with the early mustard. Because Toria has its own, jisko kehte hain, khubi hai, kahan fit ho sakti hai. To ye kiya hai ke jo Toria breeding program hai, that has been weakened. And next is this, uh, Orovenki is a very big way in the rainfed situations. And some work we have initiated, some this mutated populations and some herbicide tolerant material we have screened. So through the genome editing, one project and this DVT and uh, this uh, SES fund that is censored to our center with the NIPV. So we are doing. So this uh, 
genome editing project, particularly for this uh, uh, Orovenki program, that should be strengthened. So these are the three major constraints, and these are the possible solutions. Thank you, sir. Dr. A.K. Sharma. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much, sir. I'm honorable chairman, co-chairman, all the dignitaries. As uh, we have uh, already discussed and we have been discussing that uh, there is a need to take the technology to the ultimate users. But uh, sir, as I feel there is a one constraint uh, and why there is always a gap of uh, more than even 50% in uh, uh, some states because there is a lack of coordination among different agencies. And even uh, we have seen that uh, whatever the varieties we have recommended for a particular state, but seed agency is producing the uh, seed of the another variety. And uh, what we are uh, recommending in term of form of the fungicide, insecticide, they are not available in the market. And what are available in the market, we are not recommending them. So again, if we talk about the farmer, oil processor, even I have seen that uh, nowadays, uh, you know, that uh, market prices are decided by the oil content only. So there is a paradigm shift among the farmers. So there is a need to educate uh, all the stakeholders. And uh, we should uh, concentrate uh, uh, for uh, in the under the direction of the one agency, whether it may be a DRMR or other agencies, what should be the advocating? I think all the agencies are working alone. I, I don't know what uh, seed NSC is producing, what seed uh, other RSS is producing. So there is a need for a better coordination among all the stakeholders, all the agencies. And uh, next one point uh, is, sir, it is surprising that uh, government of India has launched a mega mustard emission program from 2020. And uh, national mission and oil seed uh, is uh, also being uh, launched very soon. But there is no role of any ICR Institute of All Seeds. So there should be involvement of ICR Institute. Directors should be in the planning, implementation, and monitoring when we are going to launch such a mega. So even we don't know how many demonstrations have been given to a particular state, which variety they have selected, all have been decided by the top level. And when we see the content, then we realize that this variety should not go for a uh, particular state. For example, long duration varieties have been given in the northeastern regions. So the, these are the two points. Uh, I feel there is a lack of coordination among different agencies and uh, every state, at least ICR Institute should be involved for the guidance and uh, for the planning, implementation, monitoring. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You have raised a very important issue. Uh, Particularly, I would like to take one minute here. Uh, if the uh, ICR institutes working on oil seed crops are not consulted, uh, it would be a serious uh, four nine. RS749, RS406, and RGN229. All these uh, three varieties are uh, maturing in 150, 155 days. So, and uh, they are tall also. So, that, see, the question is that if such a serious, it's not there. I think and uh, secondly, like you should second, like second point, sir, in, in spite of several uh, actually uh, discussion in several at several forum, and at that time, Commissioner Agriculture was uh, Dr. Uh, Malhotra. And in uh, two, three meetings, I said that the, this criteria which you have decided that uh, only those varieties will go in the mini kit, which is uh, giving two ton uh, yield, two ton or more yield. So I said that to stop this AICRP system because we are involved there in the uh, breeding of the and developing the location specific variety. India is such a vast country that there are so many agroecological zones. And uh, since inception of AICRP RM and we are doing this uh, testing at those in those regions also. And till date we have the varieties uh, which is maximum yield is 18 quintal. 
so there is no variety which is giving uh, two ton yield and maturing in 110 uh, or 120 days so uh, this is not true for all the uh, estates that you have um, this uh, given this blanket uh, this uh, yeah, you can uh, decision that uh, only two ton variety will go so by at sitting at bharatpur we can breed the varieties which is giving two ton or 2.5 ton yield and you give this so there is no need to uh, work uh, through this AICRP system. No, the, the, the question is that how do we resolve this problem? Because if this is allowed to continue, I think the mission will fail. It is bound to fail, sir, the way they are working. So, if there is no science, then it is bound to fail, actually, this, Mr. This is a serious issue. I, I think at the secretary level only, it could be, you know, taken. And I think you try to impress upon, if it is, you know, repeatedly, you will have to impress upon. Achha. No, but you have to get involved somehow. We, <laughs> yeah, the, the, any mechanism to assess the real losses which is caused by this frost it's good that it is highlighted yeah but to try to find a solution because uh, otherwise the mission is bound to fail and sir last, last year what happened because of the hot waves untimely hot waves uh, for some times it happened and 20 20 uh, 10 to 25 percent losses uh, occurred in wheat as well as in mustard yes. initially government was in the denial mode uh, dsc was in denial mode. then there is was there is no loss no loss this that so uh, coordination ka to hai hai, sir Kahi coordination hai nahi. Ah, ye, ye, ye international conference why not? which is it is very timely that uh, there is yeah, the mission effort, on yes. edible oil and uh, this and, and this could be across the all the oil seed crops yes yes anyway state level ki aapki package of practices mein aapki variety bhi nahi hogi ye problem hai okay i'll call to dr chart rs chart Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity to me. There is uh, three, four points that uh, I would like to highlight here. Uh, one is the genetic potential of uh, the varieties not achieved. Uh, we have the varieties which are having the potential of three or 3.5 ton per hectare yield, but still uh, there is uh, that potential is not achieved mainly uh, due to the production technologies, I think. Uh, and uh, among these uh, production technologies, the factor productivity that I have discussed during the presentation also, the factor productivity of land, water, energy, labor, their efficiency is very less. So that efficiency should be increased. Then another point is the resilient production technologies, because uh, Chairman Sir also mentioned that uh, heat stress during initial stress and later stages. So that stresses should be, uh, can be managed through the production, better production technologies. And uh, to answer these things, uh, there is conservation agriculture having the growth, uh, great scope because conservation agriculture can uh, minimize the uh, heat stresses. Like at initial stage, if residue is there, then it can uh, down the temperature at soil surface. And if temperature is low during uh, the cold season, the winter season, it can maintain the temperature level also. 
So uh, another is uh, the soil organic carbon content. Conservation agriculture practices can increase the soil organic carbon content and improve the soil health. It increase the soil microbial diversity also. It can maintain the moisture level, increase the moisture content and maintain it for longer period of uh, crop duration. So these things and uh, another is energy use because it is uh, less energy through tillage uh, minimum or uh, reduced tillage practices like zero tillage or bed planting. So there will be less uh, inputs in the cultivation practices, less labor use, less weed problem, except perennial weeds, there will be uh, no problem of annual weeds because of residue mulching. So Rajasthan, you have only most in majority of the areas, only monoculture of uh, mustard after year after year. Yes. In such situation, what residues will you have? But what crop can fit in that area in the Kharif season, we should take that crop and we should uh, maintain the residue of that crop. Like uh, in our experiment, uh, we selected six cropping systems. Uh, we also taken the uh, cluster bean as uh, one crop in the Kharif season. So whatever residue like green gram, it 100% uh, residue can be incorporated, uh, can be made, uh, retained because after picking the pots, uh, the whole residue can be re retained in the field. So like these practices can be developed and uh, propagated. Uh, another point is mechanization, because uh, mechanization is uh, very much important in present day, uh, not only in uh, the traditional cultivated area, but uh, in the non-traditional area, like in the rice fellow areas, mechanization is very much required. So these are my points. Uh, and one more important that Dr. Vivi Singh also pointed out is Aurobanki problem. In the most of the Rajasthan, uh, master cultivated area in Rajasthan, Haryana, there is uh, Aurobanki is coming in a big way and it is uh, uh, causing very heavy loss to the crop. So except these genetic management practices like breeding uh, tolerant or resistant varieties, there should be some practices uh, developed for agronomic uh, management of these, this particular parasitic weed. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Definitely, yes. yes. That will certainly make an impact. हम लोगों ने डॉक्टर शर्मा बाजिया जब वो डॉक्टर शर्मा डायरेक्टर थे ये मेड ए ट्रिमेंडस इंपैक्ट एक साल में हम लोगों ने ट्रेनिंग कराया टाइम भी इनपुट कराया सल्फर दिया प्रोडक्टिविटी जंप एकदम हुआ तो वो कस्टमाइज फर्टिलाइजर बैग जैसे एनपीके एनपीएस है ना तो एनपीएस अगर हो जाए तो इफ � this is the major problem, sir. I have two FLD this time, and I have two phones daily. When will you give me the food? I have given the seed from my own. In my opinion, I have been feeling that we are being discouraged. Uh, by the top level that uh, we should not conduct the FLD. Uh, DSC, why DSC is doing uh, this, sir? In, even in January, we have not received any budget and uh, all our ACRIP center has already conducted FLD. One crore 50 lakh is pending, sir. Then, uh, then, okay, uh, now, Dr. Pankaj Sharma. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, if it comes to the biotic stresses, abiotic is one of the important and very recently we are facing the frost problem in the Rajasthan, sir. In, if it comes into the biotic stresses, sir, insect and diseases, both are the major problems. And uh, in coming days, during last three, four years, or before that we are facing painted bug as a important insect uh, other than the aphid, sir. So aphid is now second we are, Facing a painted bug, Bagrada hilaris is one of the important. Still, we are not having any kind of solution, only we are recommending quinol force 1.5 percent only. Some material, we have, we have not screened any material for the painted bug so that we can found even in the wild brassicas also. 
regarding sir other diseases one of the important diseases which we know that uh, that is become the sclerotinia rot is one of the important and in sclerotinia we are i am also working with the nipb and iri both our cooperating centers and uh, we are doing sir uh, very recently we are on the cabin project on bioinformatics we are collecting all kind of uh, data from the kind of work done in the brassica nepas and all that one so then we can make a pipeline to find some kind of a Uh, genome editing we can go for that one and wild we are screening uh, we are doing that one in if we discuss in the white rust sir white rust we are having now good number of uh, kind of uh, immune response kind of germ plasm is there and uh, we are using through with the marker assisted selection sir if we what we have we have <laughs> tell us about something that you would like that this should be tackled uh, sir that that we in the that line we have to screen the number of germ plasm for the different biotic stresses so that we can found some kind of germ plasm which is tolerant to the in brassica gensia only another thing we have make some kind of idm modules for the different insect and diseases so that on the different agroclimatic zones we can recommend them for that or include that state package of practice set so that farmers on first attempt they can find some kind of solutions because many times new diseases kind of stem rot and another cholera rot disease one of the important disease which is facing many time bacterial rot is there so these diseases still we are not having any kind of pop packages even their identification is not proper through the state agriculture personnel so this is one of the important thing that we have to proceed that one another sir, some new new generation fungicides with now the label claim is one of the important things so we have to take the such kind of fungicides and now we are having the facility of drone also so even we are having drone but we are not having all the small molecules kind of pesticide so that we can make only everywhere the drone is using for the using the nano urea spraying so we are not having such pesticide which are can use during the flowering period for the stem rot or like that one so that it will be in the nano formulation so these are some points sir which can we can take into account thank you sir thank you uh, dr navin singh is not around dr hajarika also is he, is he still there no so let us now come to the conclusion of this panel discussion uh, we have had presentations or points raised by various panelists and some of them are within our control many of them are beyond our control but we have to navigate through this system to find solutions it could be administrative it could be other interventions we have to i think bring these points in the recommendations of the seminar that's the most important so that uh, it is highlighted adequately in and could be used in discussions in various fora uh, i would like to add one or two things which have not been covered one is that accelerated breeding uh, because we need to turn out varieties much faster in coming years to address the new requirements uh, i think more effort needs to be done some concrete efforts we have made some recommendations in the qrt but uh, facilities need to be created for accelerated breeding uh, dr mandokar was saying genomic selection even there we would require facilities for this sort of accelerated breeding i think that needs to be brought in somewhere uh, the recent developments uh, from the delhi university and uh, and i pg are about the glucosinolate uh, glucosinolate less seed but the glucosinolate present in the plant uh, through genome editing is an exciting opportunity because we want glucosinolates in the rest of the plant parts but not in the seed and it has to be done through genome editing only because of the number of genes involved and the process of breeding would be enormously long and dr bist in nipgr has demonstrated that it could be done at one go i think uh, that would be a, another opportunity uh, to utilize the existing uh, varieties to be converted 
into glucosinolate free seeds through genome editing. Uh, I think that's another opportunity that is awaiting us because with the uh, glucosinolate free meal, your total value of the crop will greatly increase. Rather than exporting the uh, meal, it could be used for internal consumption, which is in high demand. Uh, I think that's an area that needs to be given importance. And if public private partnership comes, I think whatever anybody who is willing to do this can take the varieties and make them glucose inlet free and give, give it back to the system and work out a system of, you know, uh, the cost sharing. Uh, Aurobenke, as has been pointed out, is a serious issue for which immediately we are not having anything. But I think you could immediately try to push your the herbicide tolerant lines to see whether it functions. Uh, although there are questions asked about whether herbicide will be effective, but I think if you have those lines now, immediately take it to the hotspots and check it. If it is working, I think that's another thing that could be done even through genome editing very quickly. Yeah, Dr. Mandoko. And BSF has the technology. They are licensing to many companies and even private um, uh, public universities. Uh, but yes, herbicide technology is greatly working for our bank. Yes, it, if it is working, that that because they have conventional mutagenesis based uh, tolerant lines. It is the same approach BSF has used. Yes, it yeah. it could be you know even conservation agriculture. It would be a very important uh, uh, weapon for that right. purpose. I think that's another thing. Uh, regarding the alternate area, although we have the amphidiploids, you know, aerocardies that I've been telling, somehow the, the lines have not come out yet. Uh, we had again recommended in the QRT that it should be shared with all. And because the lines are immune, the, the, you know, the, practically there is not a single speck of uh, alternate area on the amphidiploid. It is a dominant resistance. It should be possible to transfer it through systematic backcrossing. Some of it is getting delayed. You have both uh, ALBA-based hybrids as well as alternaria-based, uh, Aerocardis-based hybrids. It should be possible to achieve this uh, in the short run if there is a mission mode approach to get, get there. And uh, lastly, uh, the exotic germplasm. If you want to really have the heterosis, uh, uh, we need to do the pre-breeding of the, you know, exotic germplasm to make it uh, amenable to the Indian system because most of them are shattering, late, very heavy, a vegetative growth. Some programs, systematic program, for converting that into Indian types, suitable to the Indian types, and keep it as a separate pool. So we should be able to achieve greater heterosis in coming years. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to thank all the panelists and also all the other participants for a very good discussion uh, about the issues that need to be tackled. Thank you. accelerated reading Okay, we conclude here. Thank you very much. Uh, so at the end, I uh, must extend the uh, formal vote of thanks uh, to the chairman of this uh, day long almost uh, session on this uh, Repsin mustard. Uh, as a part of this satellite uh, conference and the our other experts uh, dr bhat dr sarma and uh, the colleagues who <coughs> given their views online uh, and this our fellow scientists from drmr and those who has been uh, uh, linked with this online to this uh, very important conference 
and uh, thank you all thank you very much thanks